started, hopefully. Yep, and that's good to go there. Here it goes. Here comes Core right now. I'm not here to put you out of your misery. Not yet. Core! Well, well, well. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Core. This is Core mining, uh, the, you know, the video game world for all it's worth. That's what we do here. We microtransact you, each one of you. <laughs> That's not true. I'm making all this shit up. Why am I saying this? Uh, it's good to see you all, though. We're excited to be here, and uh, uh, yeah, I got something to say. Just as to a warning, you're, you're about to lose audio in your right ear, and if you'd like to have the audio <laughs> back, it'll be a dollar ninety-nine. Yeah, I don't know if you guys heard about that, but also if you want to start the podcast over, that's another dollar ninety-nine. Um, it's just the way the industry's going, and so For just an additional three dollars, you can have another co-host join the show. That's and right. Hear what Scott's reacting? Yeah, and horse armor for about twenty-four bucks, which is a lot. Man, I wish I had a horse. Yeah, if you had a horse to put the armor on, that'd be great. Anyway, we got a lot of stuff to talk about today, including this. Put the horse armor on me, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> How would you feel having horse armor on you? You'd be all right with that? Uh, we have to record two versions of the show, one without and one with, and people who pay for the microtransactions get the cosmetics. Oh, just, Actually, yeah. <laughs> it's pretty it's much bad. the same show, but every now and then Bo moves and you hear a, a jingling of chain mail. Oh, good. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, and you'll be we, gold. I think we've struck a business, a new business idea in the world of podcasting. Yeah, we'll dig it. We'll dig through this later and figure out all the details. <laughs> but I will say that I saw something that you guys, I wish I could have photographed. I didn't take my phone. I decided to walk the dog at a time where I was like, you know what? I just want to relax outside. The sun's out. I don't want to think. I don't want to hear a podcast or a book or anything. I just want to have nature coming into me, you know, not be distracted by, ooh, I got to pull my phone out. Just so happens while I'm doing this, one of the weirdest things I've ever seen happened. It was video game related. And so I'm here now to share it with you. Yeah. I watched a work crew of two or three guys. Uh, they, I think they were that because they were all wearing yellow yellow vests to be seen or whatever. <laughs> Who knows what job? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't really you know what that was about. They were on a work crew, yeah. that or they were part of a heist. Could have been. Could have been a heist, and this was their uniform. Could have been like a, I don't know, top secret. Who knows what it was? But I here's <laughs> top secret. Here's the, yellow. <laughs> here's the best part, though. Did For, you put on your yellow vest? No one will notice you if you wear the yellow vest. <laughs> I mean, it was, it's the color of minions. It's not that crazy. But anyway. Oh, okay. Yeah, think about yeah. it, right? Think about it. So anyway, I'm there. I'm in this parking lot, and uh, they're stuffing a giant, all, uh, at the time still deflating, but mostly deflated, uh, Sonic balloon, like Sonic the Hedgehog. And he was about the size of, if you blew him all the way up, I'd say he's probably about the size of a moving truck. It's pretty big. Oh, wow. Yeah. What's this, the occasion? I don't know. That's the part I can't figure out. Why was this even there? Fast. It was near a school. Um, okay. So maybe something to do with the school. It, I, I don't know. Honestly, I don't know if it's a part of a float or a... Uh, Sonic like Olympics, maybe? You know, you have, you have track and field day. Oh, it could be. It felt more like something somebody had that said, sure, you can use it for your event, and the event was over, maybe. Um, or it was just deflating because a problem happened, and these... These workmen showed up in their black van with their yellow vests. Maybe they're, on. you know, the roadkill people. <laughs> oh yeah, and, yeah. You know what? What are, what are they called? There's, a, there's a whole group of people animal whose control. job it is to pick animal animals control. up off the highway because we slaughter billions of animals every year. And maybe it was the, maybe they called the wrong people and they thought, ah, eh, we'll take it anyways. There's yeah. a hedgehog on the side of the road. Can you boys come take care of that? Yeah, they showed up and there was Sonic. That would be a better thing to find because usually I bet that stinks and it's messy and, you know, you'd rather find a balloon probably if I had to guess. Yeah. But it was also huge. So they, a lot of guys walking on it. They're walking on his torso trying to push air out of it. And his poor little head was kind of flopping around doing its Aww. thing. Yeah. No. Anyway, so I thought of you guys. the filming of who murdered Sonic the Hedgehog, the mystery. I, I must Wait. have. They also shoved it in a dumpster, which I think is significant. Oh, is it still there? No, it's not there now. I went back. 
Of course. I went back with my he phone, by the way. Because you can take like, that. Yeah, I'm like, going to get me a big Sonic the Hedgehog. I wasn't going to do it then while <laughs> I, I, I like saw it. I like to picture Kim coming home and she pulls into the laneway and there's a giant Sonic yeah. <laughs> staring <laughs> over the house. She's I like, thought about it. got done this time? I thought about it, but when I went over there, it was gone. I took my camera. It's gone so I couldn't take a picture. Oh, yeah, that got picked up. Man, if only we lived nearby and you would have told that to me. Yeah, we could have put on you fishing out of the dumpster for sure. Yeah, we could have put on our dumb vest and gone out there and hustled that out of there. But uh, anyway, it was weird and uh, perfect for the show, so I thought I'd save it for. I didn't tell oh, the story anywhere great. else. I didn't even tell it on TMS. I'm like, you know what? I'm holding this one. I'm keeping yeah, it. Giant Sonic is big news, actually. It is big I news. Just, I just wish we could have gotten it. That's... Yeah, yeah. All I, I could hear is going to throw it out. Now, if you see a giant Sonic. What sound do you hear? Do you hear the rings? Like the da ding da ding? Do you hear uh stupid what's the first level called? Whatever it is, Green Hills Zone. Do you hear the music? Or do you hear Rad Man? Like the nineties like Sonic. I bullshit. hear Jaleel White being like, It's not okay for an adult to touch your body. That's what I like hear. That that's what I hear. Yeah. <laughs> That's a thing. Didn't we find that once on the show and play it? No, that's true. That's a hundred percent true. Is that on TV? There is a just do a just do a YouTube search for Sonic PSA touching bodies. Here we go. There Sonic PSA. Yeah, here it is. It's the first search. <laughs> of course it is. Look, yes. Uh, let's see. Okay, it comes out, music plays. All right, gives it th there's nothing more cool than being hugged by someone you like. But if someone tries to touch you in a place or in a way that makes you feel uncomfortable, that's no good. All right, Sonic. Thanks, man. That's <laughs> no good. <laughs> no good. You should just isolate that no good. That's a sound clip right there. The way he says no good is pretty no it's good. pretty good yeah i feel like that should be what was playing while they were like walking on him to try and put him in the dumpster somebody <laughs> tries to touch you in a way you don't like that's yeah. no good yeah no good it's really weird uh chat says was this a gummy moment i don't have gummies i live in utah there are no gummies here i get gummies when i go to vegas oh, did you hallucinate this whole thing no i saw this thing <laughs> and so did the lady who was on her porch sitting i know she watched it i didn't talk to her i don't know her <laughs> but was the lady there scott i mean as far as i know know the lady was there <laughs> That's a good point. i'm starting to question everything but i think the lady was there <laughs> and men in yellow don't like oh shit with the orange jackets it's like that <laughs> Stephen King book about going back to the 60s and stopping the Kennedy assassination whatever that's called 11 63 or whatever it is that movie has guys in yellow jackets but i swear i didn't like dream this i was there physically so was my was dog Bar my dog is going did your dog go, Sonic? Sonic in trouble. Uh -oh. <laughs> yeah, started maybe he talking. was just showing concern for his owner. <laughs> like you interpreted it as him being there, but he yeah. just was focused on He's you. He's like, uh, Dad, you're talking to a lady that isn't there and looking at a balloon that's not that. My owner is tripping balls right now. <laughs> yeah. I mean, she's always, well, whatever. She'd turn me in if she thought I was tripping balls. That's the kind of dog she is. But anyway, it was weird. And I wish I could have gotten that thing and put it. I don't know where I would have put it, though. It's too big. The garage. I don't have room in the garage. I don't have room. No, I know. But it's fun <laughs> to think put about. It, put it on your side of the bed with your Xbox <laughs> and your screen and your controllers. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> just, um, just the head. You don't need the rest of the body. Just the Kim big just Sonic turns head. over in the middle of the night, and it's just Sonic's face. No good. No good. <laughs> and have it just repeat. No good. No good. No good. That'd be amazing. It would drive her nuts. She'd divorce me. Here's the other thing. I one time had a hall. I think I talked about it. Had a full size Hollywood video marquee that used to be above one of the stores before they all shut down. Yeah. Used to be in here in this office space, and it was just so big. My wife finally removed it while I wasn't at home. It was a sad oh, day. Oh no! Yeah, she told me. She warned me. She says, "If you don't find out a way to do something with this thing, I swear we got to get rid of it." I said, "If it's not gone by like June, whatever it was, twenty 13 or whatever it was when we moved in because that first year then i'll i'll you can take it and do whatever you want and then i forgot i committed to that <laughs> i did nothing it's about like it calendar with a big x <laughs> hell yeah because by the, the time that the, day came it was just freaking gone so yeah yeah do you miss it no i mean yeah, i kind of i probably should have just mounted it it would have worked i don't know it was just a lot of work and i didn't do it but that would have been was cool. That important, you might have gotten to it. It wasn't yeah, even yeah, that yeah, important. Yeah. Like a blockbuster would have been cooler. But then again, the only reason I like Hollywood videos, I 
that's where I got most of my video games because they had the game crazy thing next to it. Oh, uh, yeah. So okay. that was the whole thing. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's stupid. The whole thing's stupid. I'm kind of I mean, that's the that trouble bit. with collecting things, right? You yeah. Know, it's... Especially things that are that big. That thing was longer than a car. <laughs> right. It was really stupid. It reminds uh, me of a skit or something. Somebody who's into collecting things that are way too big. What show was that from? I don't know. Exi don't it exists somewhere on somebody's yeah. streaming service in some dimension. Uh, look at this. You know, last week we launched a contest for a Doghouse Systems uh, uh, laptop, notebook, gaming laptop notebook thing. Remember that? Yep. Yeah. Good, good news, I, everyone. I can, how could I forget with all the wonderful tweets and messages that have gone out? Innumerable. Yeah. About 78.9% uh, lake run stories were in those replies. There's a lot of lake run love. Lake the lake run. run, definitely a popular one. Yeah. I didn't even check the Facebook stuff as much as the Twitter my, ones, and uh, those were My crazy. wife was not thrilled by the amount of responses that involved the Pizza Baby. <laughs> yeah, Pizza Baby story. was also up there, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, people like the Pizza Baby story. Yeah. I mean, whatever. We're adults here. People bang <laughs> to make babies, and it happens somewhere. Sure, somebody has sex uh, while they're waiting for pizza in a kitchen. people don't know where their kids were conceived. Right. Some okay. people take a dump in the lake. These are all normal things, all right? Everyone calm down. Get off your high horse. And yeah, uh, I'm just reading something here. My favorite memory from the core pod is hearing that John's youngest child was conceived out of waiting for pizza to arrive. <laughs> yep. yep. Um, there's some good Scott ones, too. Uh, Scott yelling. Me yelling? What did I yell? Uh, me uh, yelling? Just people people really enjoy you yelling. Like just, Oh, screaming. Ah! Yeah. Oh! You know, like the, you know. Your, they do like your, that. Your Resident Evil yelling. Ah! That kind of stuff. Yeah, <laughs> that that. stuff. Yeah. yeah. No warning. <laughs> yeah. There's a, there's, a, there's a whole segment of our listenership that's just waiting for you to do that again. Yeah. Uh, well, there's stuff coming. Um, what was the thing I heard about? Oh, I told, by the way, April 1st came and went, and I usually ignore all of it and have no interest in any stupid jokes because the internet is 95% April Fool's Day every day. So what's the point? But I got, I totally bought that Resident Evil was, they were trying to port it to the SNES during the early days of the PS1 because they were still trying to capture the install base, which Super NES was huge at the time. And so they made these, so it was like static, they made video and everything, static backgrounds of like places in the mansion in Resident Evil 1. And then uh, Chris and, and uh, what's her name? Can't think of her name? Jill. Be Jill. Jill, Jill, duh. Uh, Jill. And, and Barry, they were Jill. all made of balls. <laughs> like um yeah what was that like with that sega game did it uh is it called balls or maybe vector it was man? vector man vector i man? think i'm thinking of yeah. vector man but also there's a balls fighting game or something there everybody's yeah. made out of balls yeah, it was like battle and balls or something like something that. like that so that it looked like that and i and it just seemed sensible it seemed r real to me i was like oh yeah of course they would try that why wouldn't they try that Capcom has a relationship with nintendo why wouldn't they want to expand the sales of the game and port a version to this this still hot selling console, even though the PlayStation just came out and all that. I totally bought into it. Complete I, bullshit. Total bullshit. I spent an obscene amount of time trying to unlock uh, Sonic the Hedgehog in Super Smash Brothers Melee, <laughs> which was a April Fool's Day joke. But you know oh. what? He ended up getting released. <laughs> yeah. So it, apparently it was so believable it actually happened. So, you know, like mm, jokes on funny. everybody. Jokes on everybody but, but apparently. me. Apparently. But yeah. yes, I did. They some magazine wrote, "Here's how you do it. Here's screenshots." Yeah, and somebody even pointed out to me, they're like, "Well, is it April Fools?" And I'm like, "It's March. <laughs> it's not April Fools." Yeah, the rules are, it has to be on it's April first, March. Yeah, because I wasn't thinking about the fact that you get the April issue in March. Yeah, so I was like, uh, "No, next month no, is a... the April Fools' Day." Yeah, yeah, still. It's a day. It's not a month. You, you just don't get to do it if you have a monthly publication. I, I, agree, yeah, I agree, but then they. Yeah. The, I heard. I saw another fake one that got me. This is the only other one that got me, and it was a drink <laughs> that Seven Eleven was going to introduce. We talked about it on TMS today before I figured out that it was a April Fool's joke because it was published like March 29th or something, and it was a. Uh, they were going to make a new fizzy drink exclusive to Seven Eleven for a limited time that was hot dog water flavored with like a little bit of fizz in it and it was so realistically described and shown i completely bought it <laughs> completely bought it 
And I part of me wanted to. Yeah. Oh, that's so. Oh, it's disgusting. It's, <laughs> it's super foul, right? Hot dog water. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the little juice that's in the bag. You know, you take yeah. your hot dogs out, and it's in there. That's the flavor. And my son-in-law is deathly afraid of hot dog water. He hates it. He's afraid um, of hot dog water. I shouldn't say afraid. More like it disgusts him immediately. Like he gags yeah. if you even mention it. Yeah, and yeah. He, okay, that's yeah. No, so, I not, agree. Not, it's not I, a phobia. If I'm it's handling hot dogs, I try to keep it as dry as possible. I do not want that water or juice touching me. That's yeah, you don't want no wet dog. You want a dry dog. I get it. Yeah. Anyway, don't. A lot of people enjoy it as well. You shitting in a pipe. I saw that a couple of times. Oh yeah, that's an old story. I'm glad people remember it, but. I, my favorite memory is when Scott said he just you guys one time I just punched a cow in the face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was the most like what? Yeah, I it still was get so it. unlike you. I don't think of you as a violent. Not person. at all. And, yeah, and poor I... poor cow. Like why? Yeah. A cow? <laughs> <laughs> but also, it's big enough to be like that. Might have been dangerous. Too. <laughs> like, I still feel bad is. about it, and my daughter's. You like, should. I bring you it up, she gets bad. mad. I was like fourteen, you know, like John with his uh, getting out of an elevator and pushing all the buttons and running. It's a little like that. <laughs> You know, no cows were harmed in my pushing of elevator <laughs> buttons. Scott. As far as you know, somebody was on their way to floor thirteen, where a cow was for a medical emergency. Yeah, and they yeah, couldn't. Now they got to stop at every floor. That by the time they get there, he, he let out his last moo and he was dead. Oh man! As far as you know, as far as I know, I mean, oh here's I a good one. Can't Someone, disprove it. Yeah. Someone's favorite memory. This is a good one. Uh, for me, when Bo told people to be sure to clean between your butt crack and the shower, you <laughs> need to get in there. I believe in that one. Get clean that butt, people. Wow. I don't want to be smelling you through your pants. I got a real, there's a real theme to everybody's memories, and uh, I'm not sure how we should talk about poo it. Related. No, the, I'm just skipping over a the one. Shocking like, some, amount of poo related. There's, some, there's, great, there's a great diversity of ones. I'm just picking out the ones that make me laugh, which is usually pretty Well, weird. tonight we will announce the name uh, toward the end of the show. So I just wanted to remind people that at the end of the end of the show, we're going to name the name. We're going to name names, and that person will be the winner. They don't know it yet, but they will know tonight after we announce it on the show. So congratulations ahead of time. We'll get there soon. So stick around for the rest of. That's about, what, three hours from now, you'll be all set. <laughs> yeah. Well, Probably especially if we're going to keep recounting favorite memories. Like the person <laughs> who said their favorite core memory was us giving away a prize at the end of the show. Did someone do that? They actually did that? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you guys remember that. That was when you wanted to do it off air, and I talked oh, to you doing it on one. air, and then it turned into the greatest cluster F ever recorded. That was actually was pretty amazing. great. Yeah. I don't have any regrets about that. That turned out good. Yeah, as it turns out, we don't discuss these like show related logistics like off air. Usually not. At all. Like we're never like, what do you guys think about taking the show in this direction? Like we never have We do it live. Those I mean, every now and then we have a powwow, but like we don't uh <laughs> you know when it involves like uh, should we do the segment this week on hot dog water? What you, no, no, there's Never. no consultation. No. We, we have no idea what anyone's. Nor should we, because half the time this stuff is don't the good stuff just comes out of the ether. We don't want it to be planned, no. you know. Yeah, yeah. So we're, that's we're the plan. Improv people. That's yeah. right. Our plan is have no plan. Uh, but do, we do have this. We have a main topic today. It's just not that long of a one, but one that's interesting based on some new research, and we're going to get to it now. Uh. New zoos. Have you ever heard of new zoo? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, good. Uh, that's my doctor. <laughs> this uh, this is interesting because it's a it's a research firm. It's a weird name for a research firm, but it's interesting nonetheless. It's a market researcher, and they're called New Zoo. So we'll get their name out of the way and okay. try to take them seriously. Anyway, uh, they showed some really interesting data about um, video games. Uh, currently and over the last couple of years. Um, and they're tracking things like playtime, uh, across platforms, what games are succeeding, which ones aren't. And as we enter a phase of a little bit of pullback in the industry, uh, which is accompanied by the, you know, seems like requisite layoffs and, uh, you know, lower earnings reports and all this sort of stuff. This is interesting data uh, in light of all of that, I think. Uh, here is the main takeaway. 60% of playtime in 2023 went to six-year-old or older games according to this data so yeah whoa, whoa, whoa. yeah go ahead what do you got 60 percent 
sixty yeah. percent of playtime of overall playtime to six year old or o- older games across PC and console market. So we're not talking mobile or any of that. Although mobile may across be responsible. PC and console. Mm-hmm. And how do they how do they treat service games? Uh, it's in there. So here's what you've got. However, overall playtime d- decreased as gamers. Uh, focus more on older titles. So there was actually a 2.6% growth in the PC and console market. So money was made. But overall playtime decreased and gamers focus more on older titles like Fortnite and League of Legends. The top 10 games on each platform are mainly established titles with Fortnite leading all platforms. The only single player game uh, in there at all that made it into the list of the top 10 were uh, was Starfield, which uh, they show numbers for both PlayStation and Xbox. Since uh, or no, PlayStation didn't get that game, but they're saying uh, top ten of those two consoles, if that makes sense. Even though it was Microsoft only, so Starfield did pretty well as a metric here. Um, but most of that sixty percent, they say, of the of playtime, not people, but playtime, was spent mm-hmm. in these older games, games as a service, things like Apex Legends. Um, there's another one listed here. Like, let's see, uh, oh, here we go. It gets worse as they say of the 23% of playtime spent in 2023 on new games defined as two years or younger, uh, more than half were spent in big annual sequels like the latest Madden or NBA game. Only 8% of video game playtime was spent on new non-annual titles like Diablo four or Baldur's Gate three. Um, let's see. Their uh, report does point out you can still be successful in this environment. Blah blah blah. It's not all doom and gloom. Um, let's see what else is interesting. I'm trying to find the full list here. Here it is. Okay, PC. That's where we live. We love our PC gaming, right? Mm-hmm. Here's here's your top ten: Fortnite, number one; Roblox, number two; Minecraft, Jeez. number three; fourth, Counter Strike two and Go. Combine they combine them. Five, Sims four. Six, Call of Duty, Modern Warfare, and Warzone 2.0, all combined. Uh, League of Legends at number seven. Number eight, Valorant. Number nine, Grand Theft Auto V. Uh, and number 10, Rocket League. And those are all, they're all older games. Like every one of those. Well, I assume the way service works is, for a lot of us, we have we play the new releases we're into, and then we go back to our online communities or online games we like, depending on how much of a community. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that that's it true. Is, yeah. But like, yeah, I mean, a lot of, like a lot of these games usually have like a an ongoing game, mm-hmm. and then you play the big releases that interest you for a set amount of time. So, and think about it, yeah, Bo. I mean, last it's... year, twenty twenty three, you played a ton of Baldur's Gate three and a lot of Diablo four after launch, but you probably spent the most time in a 20 year old game called world of warcraft uh even though it's called oh, yeah. classic by the numbers yeah that's why they need i mean i'm not saying the whole report's cracked but you're definitely not getting much out of this report unless they start parsing the categories you know if you i don't know because this seems to only serve the service games like it doesn't tell us anything we don't already know like we all do this we have service games we spend a lot of time in mm-hmm. and then and then we, you know, play our single player doodads for a I percentage. I have some in my what I played this week. Yeah. So, same. Yeah. I mean, it's the way it's the way it happens. It's not like it's not like they put out a new Mario game and you go, "Oh, I got my new Forever Home now. Like I'm going to just play this all my life." Like you check it out and then you go back and I think that's why so many uh companies are chasing being a, the the games as a service game yep. yep and it's a it's a hill that you know carries you to a lot of success probably you know you look at fortnite fortnite's been relevant for a very long time and has had a lot of people playing it for a very long time and it's still will occasionally do an update where you know they get server you know cues to be able to log in and stuff and that's fine. Like people are always going to go back to it, but nobody's going to be doing that with a a new Mario game that comes out, something like that. Yeah, like, well, it's just not going to yeah. be the same. Well, right. Although in- interesting for Switch is that Mario Kart's fourth. Yeah, Mario Kart eight. I, I well, and wonder yeah. wonder is third. <laughs> actually, Zelda's second. Uh, okay, I, yeah. So actually, on the Switch, the these titles are because nobody's playing online games on Switch probably except for Fortnite. It looks like. Well, the da- the downside on the PlayStation is actually not great look for Sony because these are all live service games. Fortnite all the way down to Fall Guys. None of these in between are anything but that. 
I mean, you can play single player in some of these, but they're, you know, and no one's playing Grand Theft Auto Five at number two on that slot. <laughs> and Destiny's not in the list. And Destiny's not on there. Yeah, that's kind of a bummer. <laughs> the one they acquired. <laughs> but uh, in Xbox's case, they have uh, Starfield at number eight. That is a single player only game. And that's it. So there's, they're outside of, you know, older games with a campaign that no one's playing anymore. That's the only one showing that with a new game. Uh, Switch, though, kind of riddled with single player experiences. You know? Well, I, I think it's it's probably not your premiere on games as a service platform. That's your yeah. premier mm -hmm. um, Nintendo IP platform. Yeah. Fortnite's you know? still number one on there, but yes, you, you make a good point. Yeah, because Fortnite is just a phenomenon. That's sort of, I think we just explain it that it's like a big age range and people just love play will play that shit out of that game anywhere. Minecraft's mm -hmm. also on there too. Right. Yeah, that's true. Um but it has the most like single player y uh, level of games but um you know what's funny is this is microsoft everyone's always like oh what's their exclusive game as a service that does really well they own minecraft and it's across yeah. all these in like uh, the top three they own, they own blizzard now too <laughs> well yeah but prior i guess i'm saying prior to that on uh, all platforms yeah yeah all yeah. platforms this thing's in the top three pretty much everywhere fourth on x it's funny it's lower on its own platform oh i guess it's lower on playstation but um but yeah uh, it is funny that there isn't really an mmo on the pc list actually that doesn't um, surprise me because my, that, my that does, it, does that surprise you because i don't think mmos are what they used to be or they haven't grown at the rate of everything else i think they've just yeah, kind of i suppose there. it it's not surprising because these games that have 30 minute to an hour chunks of match time yeah are easier to log into and log off of and you do end up putting more hours like there's definitely days where i'm like if I log into Warcraft today, I'm going to be in there for six hours, and I don't. I got to go to bed in three. Right. So maybe right. I need to do something different. There is that. Um, yeah. But I'm still shocked because MMOs are, you know, were once the phenomena. And I think if you were to ask a crusty, you know, <laughs> gamer, it would be like they, there would be more respect put on the name of an MMO than on one of these like games as a service type games right if you so, combine the big ones like if you took eso final fantasy 14 and wow and smushed them together i think your numbers would be in the top 10 i'll bet mm -hmm. wow and i'll bet final fantasy are probably in the top 20 they didn't do that many but i'll bet they're in there well i guess it depends where they measured their markets blizzard doesn't really release their number that, that's been a subject of a lot of discussion is that wow is actually surging right now right and they don't report subscriptions it. fueled by well I think somebody cobbled together from a bunch of different sources um, a guesstimate yeah. <laughs> and showing that like they're back up to Legion numbers potentially. I that, might have that wrong. But... That was uh, Bellular Gaming, and he said yeah. Um, yeah. he he had something confirmed. Somebody at Blizzard or somebody said these are about right or something. Yeah, like it's you know um, most games you know uh, they consistently go down unless they're games as a service where they have that wavy sort of. Yeah, you know, a new content release, bunch of people come in, which a lot of these games is the format they follow. But WoW is very much a, it's been dwindling, and um, there, there has been a resurgence in World of Warcraft. Um, the classic stuff, positivity, is huge. Yeah, um, I think, I think Dragon. I think, I think seasons, season of Discovery, classic and hardcore are carrying those numbers significantly. But yeah, mm -hmm. the yeah. I mean, it's hard well, hard to up. say, but I think at they're... the end of the day, it's the same sub. You know, like it it doesn't matter. It's not three like, subs, you don't yeah. necessarily have to get into the minutia of it. Um, but like, you know, if you look at that graph, the big peaks come from classic. The big peaks come from well, what came out? Season of Discovery came out. You know, like yeah. it's not surprising to, or it's not hard for me to feel confident saying. Season of Discovery, Classic, and Hardcore are really doing the bulk of that work. Yeah. But um, at the end of the day, you know, subs are subs, and it gives them the ability to do things like Plunderstorm, no matter how you care about it, you know, whether you do or don't, I, and yeah. have a audience available for it. Yeah, I guess like my curiosity is where would it was that measured on this list, and if not, that would be why it's excluded. Maybe there's no MM like. I think a lot of these games that we're seeing here are tracked on Steam. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I don't, I don't know think anyone else to Blizzard or Bethesda's like 
MMO branch. You know, yeah. Like, so does does maybe John knows this? Does Square do numbers for fourteen or the? T- no, they okay. don't talk numbers. You can get numbers from Steam, but most Final Fantasy fourteen players don't play on Steam, so it's not an accurate mm. count of numbers. It's an issue on Steam. It's not great. I, I experienced that myself. But get it get a separate download. Everybody don't but don't play it on Steam. It's oh, just shit. a uh, it's just an extra step you have during the registration, which you is already don't shitty because it's already rough. It's already so. a mess. It's already the hardest boss. It doesn't of the game. need an extra step added to it. Yeah. But I play on Steam. I get counted in that group. Oh, that's, you do? I didn't know that. That's how I have it. Yeah. Well, you're you're a Steam guy, you know. It's not like it's one of those things. I don't want. I rarely say this because I do think that the way their sign up and you know that whole thing it is bad like it is a nightmare i will say once you understand it it's not that bad yeah but i don't say that often because it's inexcusable how bad it is for someone just coming to it yeah but this um <laughs> so well, it's it's pretty one, gnarly. Like one thing one thing this does show to a little bit that i wonder about is um i wonder if they're counting match time for some of these oh interesting because i don't know yeah. I, I, because a lot of games like this, like even I've been I've been playing co-op commanders in StarCraft. I will leave it on the StarCraft menu screen for like an hour to go make dinner and stuff. Like I don't know. I think a lot of people who play match-based games aren't. This is very anecdotal and my experience, but I tend to leave like the Heroes of the Storm yeah. UI Cute. up and not play. Whereas like I'm if I'm I'm less likely to do that in Warcraft. Um, I'll probably log out if I know I'm going to go because I don't want to get killed or. You know, I'm just it'll Warcraft will log me out anyway, so I tend to log out. You know, if I'm going to John, away. John, if you AFK in like uh, uh, Fortnite, does it kick you uh, eventually? Like, if even just in the menu, I don't mean in game, but like you know, you're you're it, no. If you're idling on the main menu screen, you'll be you'll it'll keep you in there. Okay. Like, so to Bo's point, that's entirely possible that they are. Although I don't know what they do when they hit points where they have server queues because like once they start hitting queues i know a lot of games will do that like final fantasy you can afk in game in final fantasy as much as you want yeah like that's why final fantasy 14 has kind of an infamous community of people that are just always there our server has the sexy pope yeah there's a place where you go and he's just a naked pope looking dude dancing all the time right it's because he just leaves the game running all the time and he's always there and the game does not kick him um when they had all the login server issues when endwalker came out they removed the ability to just stay afk in the game and it would force people out to help get more people in sure makes sense and so you saw those characters disappear <laughs> like, <laughs> they weren't so, there anymore so the dancing but, pope he got booted for hanging. well i actually got to see the dancing pope questing and i was so excited about it like i was like seeing a unicorn i saw him <laughs> out wearing gear fighting and i was like what? oh my gosh it was like bumping into a celebrity i felt so cool i was like oh i got to see this wow. what an amazing sight well the bow's point i had a um, an indie game open once. Well, I don't remember doing this, but I, I, at one point I looked on how long to beat or how long to finish or whatever it's called dot com. Um, and it tells you how long games are on average. And if you do everything, it's this much more. And if you do just the storyline, blah, blah, blah. So I went and looked and it said like, oh, this is only a six hour game. And I went to my game and I looked at time played and it was like 28 hours. And I went, okay, A, I don't remember playing that long. And B, how bad am I that it took me 28 hours to get as far as I am? I'm not even done yet. And then it hit me. I went, oh, I probably launched this at some point. Forgot it was down there. Probably even played other games while it was still down there. Yeah. And just sat there all night, you know, and got 28 hours and nothing. So, Bo, it's, I think you're right. Like, I, like I, They don't say anyway. Maybe there is yeah. more to this For data. For some than, of those games, I think the scale, it's not like everyone's logged into that game, but you're your habit game you're more likely to be logged into more often so i think the numbers still make sense like we are in there a lot right right and that for for like what you're trying to grok for what this might tell you about the market and the, any products you want to make or about our tendencies but yeah you know i, I um I don't think this really says like these games are what everyone wants to play and people don't want the other experiences. I think these are just habit forming games that in many cases people are just logged into often. Yeah. Um, 
I yeah. like what Baluey so, in the chat says. Baluey says Crusader Kings three is heavily skewed in in me leaving it on for a day because I don't want to restart. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I mean, even The Sims four, it's like it's a simulation. Isn't the point to leave it running? Yeah, but you just sort of let it run. It's yeah. the the. I think they're trying to measure like by just how many people know what the IP is and are you know logged into these games, like the sheer yeah. volume. Yeah. Um, and. I think probably World of Warcraft should probably be on this list and just isn't because they don't have the data. That's right. It's, that's my it's sense, interesting but... data to me, but I don't think it proves anything in the way that they're framing it. I don't oh, think, I, it, think... It, I don't think it proves anything. I think it's just kind of like, even if it's just surface data that doesn't give us these details that we're now talking about, it's still interesting how much older games, mostly as a service, but how much older games people will go back to. Maybe it's not that interesting. We do it all the time. I do it. You guys do it. Bro, Bo's in the middle of doing it, like big time with WoW. By the yeah, way, could like, could have could have Warcraft is like could a former could have could have former Blizzard CEO been more wrong when he said you think you want it but you don't? Could he have been more wrong about that? <laughs> no, I don't, I don't remember. To, to be fair that. to J. Allen Brack. <laughs> Oh, and to everyone, <laughs> I'm name. pretty sure. <laughs> to be fa- to be a little bit fair, it's new territory for all of us. You know what I mean? Like no, I, I yeah, don't. You're right. I look at him in that moment, going like, "Man, we're doing all this exciting stuff. What do you mean you want old shit?" And and you look at it, and you're like, "Well, people like their old cartoons and their old movies, and people like the music they grew up with and hate the shit kids listen to nowadays." It like totally makes sense. That classic could be a flavor, but you know, yeah. MMO. It's the it's the it's the first time anyone's you know said, "Hey, uh, what about this old ass version of an MMO? Could we release it and be like crazy successful?" And well, now we know, yes, like, but we didn't. That would have been an assumption, right? And not something we knew for sure when JL and Brack said it. So cut the man a little. Yeah, back. that's true. I'll give him. I'll give him some credit for that. Also, there were people at Blizzard and other places who just scoffed at the idea that anyone wanted transmog or that anyone cared about dressing up their characters or theming them or any of that. They were dead wrong. I still wrong. remember hearing Ghostcrawler say he was shocked that people liked he, the transmog system as much as they do. And he was I, blown away by it. If I had hair, I would have pulled it well, out when I heard that <laughs> quote from him because well, to I me, mean, it's like you don't think people want to customize their character in a role playing game? I, 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 so I think, yeah, it depends on how you because it's there's no wrong answer to this, it's like it's how tastes go. Like, I can understand a realm where, like, the real world, I can't make my gap shirt look like my Versace shirt, you know what I mean? Like, sure. So, so if I want the Versace shirt, I got to go and save a thousand dollars and do a bunch of work to obtain the Versace. Yeah. And so the notion that you can just transmog, uh, does run counter to the, you know, the version of Dungeons and Dragons or TTRPG where you earn the item and that item is an item of legend and you can't do these things. Right. Right. There's no wrong, there's no right or wrong answer. The problem with that mindset, and this is why it's baffling to me that they, they couldn't figure this out and still don't uh, yeah. with WoW, frank- frankly, is that the people that care about that, the EP of it, the I worked hard to display this and now I'm going to stand in town proudly, mm-hmm. is a smaller number than the vast majority Maybe. that just I, want no it is because that the, doesn't it doesn't because matter because the con- it does we're about what it does matter prefer. because listen because if everybody cared that much then everybody would do that content but it's well, a smaller number classic. of people that do that content people than otherwise <laughs> that that don't like the, and like I'm happy that transmog's not in there it's like a feature so and I'm not saying I, one I think, is right or wrong I'm just I saying I think that to me it is an obvious like fallacy to design for the the e peeners out there and go well, well I, we're I gonna think, put in the cool stuff for this i just think mm-hmm. what we're talking about is different products for different people and mm-hmm. it's one game mm-hmm. that like transmog is nice like i do appreciate it and respect it but it's not something ev- you can't just be like we're gonna figure out the version of world of warcraft that will have zero complainers because everyone's gonna have a set of preferences in a system so complex 
that they're gonna like or dislike. I'm not saying it's bad, but when I logged into retail and saw the traveler's chest, I was I logged out. It made me log out. I was like, Ugh, this place is not See and that stuff this is, I this like is not what I what I remember or want. Anymore. Yeah, and so like, what you're you're actually perfectly illustrating the point, and I agree with you, Bo. I think you're hundred percent right. There are people who want that and people who don't. I happen to be somebody who wants that. I want the modern mm-hmm. takes, I want the I want the progression of the game. I don't want to go back to old systems and old ideas. But I also love retro games, so it seems almost counter to me because I love going back and playing some old ass, you know, SNES game all night, mm-hmm. and that seems crazy to some people because like, why wouldn't you play the new 3D awesome thing? There's an old game. Why would you play that? I think that the fact that the, the smartest thing Blizzard is doing right now, and any MMO maker really, is giving everybody as much as they can give without it killing them. Like I, I feel like WoW is doing that better than ever, although they're still just sort of getting started with this, but. They've got Retail WoW in a really good place. They have Classic in a wonderful place for those who want it. And they have this new inserted, hey, we're going to make a battle royale just for funsies. It's actually the kind of the PvP I wish the game had, period. It's good. Whole other, whole, whole other point. But my point is, like, this is what they should be doing. They should be saying, we've got players of all stripes. We should be trying to cater to as many of those stripes as we can. I think FF14 does a really good job of doing that in the game that is the game across the board. Will there be people in another 10 years going, well, I want to go back to the original version of Final Fantasy (laughs) XIV? Probably. There probably will be somebody. What will they do? I don't know. Maybe they'll do it. But it's really interesting to see us come... You, you you progress so far and you've given people what they want in a modern game, but then there's this whole contingency. It's like, well, I miss the old game. And Blizzard was smart, dumb to wait so long, but smart to finally do it, Um, I think. I think it's benefiting yeah, them. Yeah, they have found a way to cater to both camps, despite both camps being so different in how they how they think. i mean even yeah. within two we've had conversations well you know for classic where it's like i take the new animations and the new art like i i have zero qualms about them like i want the classic gameplay mechanics but the art suck like i'm jealous of how good retail <laughs> like i want <laughs> i want the updated like uh you know look and the charge on warrior is way better <laughs> you know in the new version it's actually sl- like i will happily take that but the next person is going to be like oh, yeah you know, if, like, if you know, all three of us were to uh, design you know and this is this is where i do feel bad for for blizzard if all three of us designed classic plus whatever we thought that should look like we would have three vastly different games. Yeah. Oh yeah. And yeah. if there were six of us here, we'd have six vastly different <laughs> games. Yeah. Um, like that's that's the thing. I mean, like item one for me would be like, yeah, put transmog on there. I don't want to look like a clown. I hated like that. Yeah. and and there's gonna be people that don't like transmog. Yeah. Um, so it's it's just one of those things where it's how do you serve so many people? I think they're doing a decent job of serving uh, a lot of different people. I'm shocked uh, that other MMOs can walk that rope uh, with only one version of the game. Part mm-hmm. of the problem, I think, with Transmog, though, not to get too into it, is that I think that it was like legendaries couldn't be Transmog. I don't know if that's still true. Uh, I think not. They've loosened. Yeah. The oh, they did. Okay. Because then, then I'm like, then they have the best of both worlds, but I'm like, but Warcraft. <laughs> The thing, one of the things I hate about World of Warcraft is how stingy and withholding they are on like everything. You know, like the toy box, right? Like, here's a yeah. toy. Enjoy using it every ten hours. <laughs> even I even classes like, so here's a sweet shoulder. You get one percent crit extra. And I'm like, that's it. <laughs> like, yeah. You don't got any more crit, <laughs> you know, for me. Like, you just give me one percent. Like, yeah. I, I hate how like stingy they are with like, you know. The toy box <laughs> thing will never make sense to me. Retail classic, I don't care where it is. What are you doing with the? We've talked about <laughs> the this, meme but... of fun detected. Let's kill it. <laughs> is, uh, really alive in the toy box of World of Warcraft. Yeah, uh, ten hour use on a thing that's barely anything. It's like what you is played the, point? the first notes of the Diablo theme in the inn. Of a World of Warcraft tavern. See you ten hours. Twenty-four hour cooldown. Yeah. <laughs> you can do that again tomorrow. Yeah, we'll see you tomorrow. I mean, your Hearthstone will reset fifteen hundred times between now and then, but not this toy. Oh, 
Yeah, and the reason this came up was just because, you know, like, I remember playing Legion. It's like, oh, we're going to get legendaries, and it's random world drops. It's awesome, but you can only equip one. Yeah. Heaven forbid you have two legendaries or three or whatever they capped it at. Maybe it was two. <laughs> they're just so heavy, you know, like, though. They're full like, of power, and they're heavy. They're hard to hold, I guess, oh, or something. I'm a champion of, like, 5,000 war campaigns. I could give me all the legend. you know? It's <laughs> No, these are all good points. Um, we'd love to hear what you think. Do you think this research is interesting? Were you counted in it? Uh, these are the games you're playing. How do you feel about older games? Let us know. Uh, core or talk to the core at gmail.com. Let's talk about the games we did play. That's the wrong theme. Nope, that's the right theme. I did it right. Uh, let's talk about. I don't know why it sounded wrong to me. Don't second guess yourself, man. Let's, you got this. Let's talk about some older games. Now, don't worry. Some of you out there are going, I sure wish one of them, they're people on this show would have played that their dragon's dogma too well good news one of us did sort of we'll talk about that in a second but first let's go back some years <laughs> um i've been looking for i feel like john and i are weirdly aligned in the last few weeks where we're having a hard time no know, knowing which itch to scratch and then also what will itch or what will scratch the itch we think we have and i go through this a couple times a year where it's just like nothing's doing it for me or it's not like, you know, I'm not getting my hit. It's just like, what, what's 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 going to be the most fun based on the kind of week I'm having? Because I don't have a lot of time. So what can I, what can I do where I can have some good escape but not be so escaped that I, you know, drop the ball on other stuff? Or these kinds of things are always going around. So I don't know if it was because of all these third-person anime action games I've been playing. I think they had something to do with it. But I got, I just got curious. I went, oh, when's the last time I played one of these Darksider games? And I played Darksider 1 all the way to completion back in the 360 days when it was out and loved that game to death. It's my favorite Zelda game that isn't a Zelda game. It's so good. Oh, the, you want to talk about greatest video game surprise for me ever was yeah. buying Darksiders because I liked the art. Yeah. Because uh, I'm a, man. a huge fan of uh, Joe Mad. Yeah. And uh, I just love that style. I was like, oh my gosh, it looks so metal and cool and like... Um, I was like, I got to play this. And then playing it and realizing it, it's a Zelda game. I was like, holy shit. I had no idea what it was. I thought it would just be like press X to slash demons yep. over and over and over again. I thought, you know, that's all we're going to be doing. And then all of a sudden it's like I'm pushing things and chests are appearing. And I was like, it's a Zelda game on top of it. Yep. This is amazing. There are regrowing, incredible surprise. regrowing throwable uh, sticky bombs. Like they full yep. on. There's just stuff straight up lifted from Zelda in that game. And I'm very happy that they did because I loved it the first time through. I played it again on PC, not fully. Uh, some years ago, I was just like, oh, the re, what was it, War Mastered version or something they called it? Yeah. And then I just kind of, it just sat there. And I also started but didn't finish two back in the day, I think 360, same. Uh, and the reason I didn't finish it is unclear to me because it has all the elements of things that I like. I think I just, I don't know, I got busy. I didn't finish it. So I installed Darksiders and Darksiders 2. I have both PC versions. The War Master version of Darksiders, which is higher res, better textures, all that. And Darksiders 2, which had a ton of work done to, done for the die. Uh, Death, the, de definitive. De definitive. It's hard to say. I freaking hate it. <laughs> definitive. <man. laughs> definitive edition. And I'd forgotten that uh, Michael Wincott is the voice of Death. He's so good, dude. Oh, my gosh. Of course, you know, Liam O'Brien back doing uh, War's voice. He was all up mm -hmm. in the first one. Uh, I sent him a screenshot, and he goes, ooh, that's an old one, but a good one. I said, yeah, it is. Um, and so I just got really into Darksiders, and I also read a couple of Joe Mad comics, and I also uh, started thinking about what are they working on next. And, <laughs> oh, right, they made that League of Legends game that uses his art style. Kind of want to check that out again. And yeah. So I was thinking about all these things, but mostly I just kept my head in Darksiders, and I am here to tell you, Darksiders 1, which I played a whole restart, probably, I don't know, four hours in. I already beat that game, so it's not like I plan on beating it again, but I played a bunch of it. And then I was like, let's let's spin up 2 and give that an actual playthrough, because last time I just stopped early. And both those games are rad. The second game oh. introduces itemized level or itemized um, loot, uh, which I forgot was a thing. Uh, so they you know kind of put some Diablo in there as well. A lot of this game was, you know, kind of half half Diablo, half. Oh shit, that's loud. Sorry. Um, it had uh, 
uh, what was I trying to say? Um, oh, it's more open world. You get a horse right away, that kind of stuff. And I love Wincott's performance. I love, um, uh, uh, what's his name's back? Uh, Mark Hamill uh, doing stuff. Oh, that's right. He was your little demon buddy guy. Yep. And he's was... very good in that role. It's, yeah, it doesn't he's like Joker adjacent. Kind of. And it's, but it's good enough where I don't go, oh, here we go with the Joker variant no it's better it's, than that it's in that wheelhouse like he, he kicks it up into a demon form yep. which is good and the other good news is the combat holds up it's very fun the game rocks both games do darksiders 2 introducing open world elements and things that i love is a big boon for me i i like that stuff a lot so i'm playing you know i'm gonna i, I think i'm gonna all right let me just beat that shit because it's cool man that game is good and uh, yeah, I played a ton of Darksiders. So you're like, yeah, hey, what, what old games? You know, everyone's playing old games, it turns out. Well, so am I. <laughs> there's nothing wrong with that. Nothing and wrong with that at all. Darksiders is cool. It's just, again, there's just something about Joe Mad's art. Like, I swear, if you told that guy to draw you an envelope, he would draw an envelope and it would look like it weighed 15 pounds and had seen some shit. Like, like the most badass envelope ever made. You're <laughs> like, absolutely it's right. It's just insane. I don't know how he does it. I tried. You know how sometimes you'll try and, like, uh, do a version or a piece of art that's in the style of somebody else's? And his is like a weird alchemy to me. I'm like, okay, so he drew a chain. I can draw a chain. My chain looks wimpy and lame, and his chain looks like it murdered seven people on the way to the page. <laughs> I just don't, I don't understand how it happens. It's I don't so either. Good. He is one of the most. I mean, there's nobody like him, honestly, in comics or otherwise. And I love his games. Um, I really want to. I want to get back to that Genesis one, which was the top down uh, dual stick one that I think Bo, you have it as well. Yeah, um, Genesis. That's um. I was looking into like the studios for it. These are these are the uh, Remnant guy. Like two and three, I think, was made by the same studios. Remnant. Uh, really shared enjoyed. people. I think they changed studios a couple of times. Like Gun originally, Gunfire Games. Yeah, yeah, Gunfire was the original game. Well, before that, it was even something else. There's a whole. That's yeah. the other thing I did is I deep dived on what's going on now. It's a it was a big gnarly mess because they were a part of THQ. THQ folded bunch of that stuff got sold off eventually nordic games got a hold of it the co-founders which was joe mad and the uh the programmer guy uh split and started two separate studios but then some of that came back together it's like a whole thing um that i dug into that was really interesting i uh, read about that last night in fact but anyway game holds up two in particular is a real jump in visuals like it's just really pretty game first game's fine but it's you know showing its age i think you know what i miss i miss 360 era aesthetics i don't know what it is sometimes i need that <laughs> in my life i can't explain it it's not it's something very specific to that generation that nothing looks like that now anymore and essentially the mechanics were there that we're still using today so you know we're not we haven't really innovated too far past it i mean i guess you could say dark souls and that kind of stuff is a big jump forward for third person action but there's there's something about this era that i really have fondness for and you know ps3 360 zone was a was a real happy place for me so anyway i'm playing the hell out of that and having a blast so i can't recommend it enough also both games play wonderful on the steam deck i will give you one warning the war master version of one uh it will work but it some of the cut scenes aren't won't play on steam deck so they just skip them it's very weird <laughs> Uh, otherwise everything's fine. It's the only, in fact, in the little thing where it says, you know, mostly plays fine. It has a little caveat that says literally some of the cutscenes won't show up and they, and it's true. They don't, um, in two, all of it's there. It's a, no problems. Everything's included. Uh, I can't speak for the original original, but this, this death mastered or the hell, whatever Bo called it. Death. What is it? Death, death, the definitive, definitive version. <laughs> I hate it. <laughs> it's hard to say. Yeah. Definitive. I, I used to not like remastered for the um for that that mars remaster game that mars yeah. what was it called uh shit red faction red faction uh they called that remastered which is really annoying yeah. but th that's better than death definitive freaking f that definitive remastered is worse that's yeah. a worse word i think i agree <laughs> it just makes me think you're gonna get john marston in there yeah, yeah. i thought it was you were talking like, i thought you were gonna talk about red dead redemption yeah <laughs> No, nope. definitely not that. Um, it is cool, though. And, uh, you know, it was good then. It's good now. It's, shit holds up. I hope they do. And I want to play three after this. I never did play three. So I kind of want to do that. 
So I'm just in the mood. We'll see how far I go with it. I had somebody in our Discord say, oh, I think Scott's done with his anime spin. No, I played some Trials of Mana this week. I played a little more of, you know, these other games that I've already talked about at length. I don't need to go over them again, but don't worry. Scott, Scott's weaving, how weaving much Naruto is weaving. did you watch? I watched no Naruto. I watched an episode of the big naked people walking up to the wall. Um, yeah. Oh, nice. <laughs> I like that title better than the actual title. <laughs> Uh, Attack Big on Titan. Naked people watching, walking up to a wall. That's right. <laughs> and I also watched. Uh, oh, the, I finished that um, Devil May Cry anime. It was all right. It wasn't like mind breaking, but it was okay. Anyway, uh, what else? Do you have a waifu yet? I do not have a waifu yet. Although a listener did send me a body pillow, but it has no markings nice. or, or anything Let's on see it. it. I oh, it's just a just blank, blank one. Just a blank so, one. oh, okay. Well, that's a template. That's an acknowledgement oh. that you'll get there. And, yeah, yeah. you you're, you got to get everyone in the house used to it before you, you know, have one with the. It's a step in the right direction if you yeah. believe that that's the right direction, right? Like, yeah. I'm going the right way. Yeah. You're um, there. Now, if you're a gamer who, you know, late '90s, early 2000s. Hey, where, gamers. Hey, gamers. We hear you. Let's talk to you. Uh, do you guys remember Might and Magic 3? It was amazing. It's a really good game. Turn-based battles, overworld Ma- stuff. Yeah, I never really got into Might and Magic. Did you play some? I did back in the day. That's not what I played this time, though. So oh. I played something new-ish that is very reminiscent of that game, To uh, I think, to its credit. It is a game called Songs of Conquest. And no, John, it's not entirely bards. I know you'd love that, but it's not Man, like a bard game. a whole group of bards, that'd be great. It would be something. That'd be annoying, honestly. It would definitely be something. But this is uh, a game by an indie studio that really, really wants to recreate what that game used to feel like. And if you never played it, it's hard to describe. But if you have any kind of nostalgia for those Might and Magic games, especially 3, uh, 3 was kind of the pinnacle, I think, this game scratches that itch hardcore, and it is um, uh, this pixelated overworld, but is really beautiful and kind of 2.5D. It's kind of hard to explain. The battles are turn-based uh, strategic fights uh, that you go into that are really fun. You can also auto-complete them if you think you're good enough or you want to you know, just move quickly <laughs> through stuff. Um, they don't play out in front of you. They're more like... Um, Oh, I, I'm trying to get an example of this. Uh, uh, Age of Wonder does this. Um, anyway, you can you can skip a fight if you think you got enough shit going on uh, to win. I don't skip them because I, I enjoy the tactics of it all. And those fights are really fun. They're really fun and animated well. The music's insane. It's a beautiful game uh, that really, really... Uh, gets that that it, aesthetic it has right. a campaign like to it right? oh yeah m- multiple campaigns i'm only in the first one still and they're different classes uh, there isn't a multiplayer component but i don't know how it works or what it is i assume it's some sort of uh co-op or something i don't know but the uh the multiplayer stuff i'm playing so far is very good the map mechanic stuff is very satisfying you have you know action points you expire so many after time uh, there's, there's just a lot here that a lot of games have taken over the years and done other things with and this is just like this primordial ooze of of what those games started out as and it's very very good uh beautiful nice interface like it just feels like a really polished experience and it is still in early access technically but this thing feels like it's near done to me i don't know i don't know i can tell they're doing a good job of capturing the vibe because watching the gameplay on the screen I'm having the exact same reaction I've always had to watching anything of a heroes of might and magic game uh which is Wow, that looks incredible. I should play that. Yeah. But I've never done it. Never pulled I think the trigger. I don't even own a few because I think there have been multiple times where I've had the money to spend and gone, that looks like a game I want to play and mm-hmm. have never pulled the trigger on. Yeah. So, uh, it just uh, it just always seems so daunting to get into. Sure. Sure. Um, uh, so uh, just as a little aside, it's on massive sale right now. Oh, is it? In Canada, it's ten bucks. It's oh my gosh, thirty thirty dollars. I think I paid full. I have Heroes of Might and Magic five. That's what I got. That's Heroes of I Might know. and Magic. I don't remember five. I don't remember if I played five. I think I may have ended with four or four. <laughs> I don't. I mean, I'm sure four those are or. all. I'm sure those are all good. I have no doubt. Um, the consensus is three is where things peaked, but 
you know, there's there's newer stuff that's an age of one. The Age of Wonders games are very similar, and there's a there's the space one, the interplanetary one, and there's the fantasy ones, and you know, it's, it's obvious that this genre carried on, and uh, plenty of fans are getting what they want. Uh, here's the battle system. This is pretty good stuff. Oh yeah, I have Age of Wonders four. Yeah. <laughs> I've bought so many of these games that I've never played because they all look like they're made for me, but I'm always too afraid to learn them. They're a little daunting, but uh, but once you get the basics down, they really aren't. Like it's it's a lot of sort of be smart about your overworld management, uh, explore around, find secrets, enter these battles. Be smart about your, you know, you do XCOM style battling. It's not like it's too crazy in there. You have lots of abilities and magic and, you know, diversity of, of units over time and that sort of thing. Um, I really like it a lot. Like it's uh, super it helps, rad. Uh, this is also a coffee stain publishing game. Oh, I like them. They do good which work. Is, you know, yeah. I mean, judging by, because I'm looking at their store page, I like own everything they make and like all, like Valheim. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm, yeah. Valheim, Deep Rock Galactic. <laughs> Yeah, they have a great, you know, they have a good yeah. pedigree. Uh, satisfactory, awesome. Yeah. Um, I'm just like, oh, Hunt Down, which I haven't played, but I bought a long time ago. I have that you too. that was good. Yeah, yeah we should try um, that. I'm just looking at their games and I'm like, man, all of their games are, I, it turns out I'm a fan, fan yeah. of Coffee Stain. Like I have everything and like all of it. Well, you guys might like them because these are, these gives me lots of different vibes, like War Tale vibes. Like a lot of War Tale at its core is kind of this. I mean, it, it's yeah. A, I was gonna say not aesthetically, but it's you know, if right. you're managing a company of uh, heroes, or in the case of War Tales, like you're more like borderline criminals that you just hire into a murder band, yeah, <laughs> do 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 murder, <laughs> yeah, uh, basically mercenary murder, yeah. Um, but it's the same vibe, like you're you know progressing through a map and. Yeah. Doing quests and managing your team. And the way you're represented over in the overworld in Song of, what's it called? I already forgot the name. Song of Conquest, I almost said Destiny, is, uh, it sounds like a mobile game generator name, but anyway, whatever. Uh, it, it, uh, you're, you're represented by this, like in this case, this first campaign, you're this big, tall avatar woman who, all, all of your armies are with her, but you don't see them. She just represents them like a JRPG or something where you're one character until you fight or whatever. So there's a bit of that. Um, and uh, in the overworld, you're communicating, lots of story being told. You're capturing gold mines and doing a quick battle to, to take over a farm area where now you can benefit from that food every day or every turn or whatever it is. Uh, rotation, you get so much food and money and that sort of thing. Um, it's all those things, and it's very cool um i think this game is great so high recommendation for this song songs of conquest and i always like to mention how things are on steam deck runs like a dream on there no problems really good uh controller okay. support and everything great mouse support as well all right finally this is just a quick mention because i don't want to be i don't want to embarrass myself all right <laughs> well go ahead uh <laughs> still a lot of show left uh you? that's true <laughs> i wanted i got an itch for some gotcha mechanics don't ask me why i don't know what happened there i just wanted like the phone equivalent of pick up my thing check up my army oh okay cool i can level up these four guys and progress uh cool i did it all right i can shut it off and check it in later like that kind of game and the one everybody kept yelling at me to pick up was this thing called afk journey i also noticed it's been advertised a lot to me on social media <laughs> afk journey. yeah and you'll be surprised what the afk wow. part is it sounds so oh, it's exciting not away from, it's so exciting i'll be away from keyboard what's crazy about it is it's there's a lot here um if you know you know you guys know what a gotcha game is like bo you played your fair share of them um, uh, we, we gotcha is more of the yeah the okay. co collect the characters, random loot box, mash them together. Yeah, you mush don't them play together. them long enough to get to the Ding Desert. I don't think. No, I although guess. I may have done that recently. Uh, I'll I'll get to that in a okay. second. But right. I started playing this. They give you a ton of content. It's very front front loaded with lots of uh, expansion and lots of stuff, and you're, you make a huge amount of story progress and. Um, even the, the other modes are, are plentiful and just always something to do. But I do think I've, I've hit a place where it's getting harder to level my, my the characters I need to level. 
What? Um, so Ding Desert. I know. Shocking, right? Shocking. Yeah. yeah. That's uh, amazing. It's, it's fun for a while. A tight, fun then, experience eventually gets bogged it's, down. It's fun for a while, and, and then the main gameplay mechanic is get your credit card. Yeah, get out your wallet. Um, it isn't. Or I haven't felt pl- play bad content and, and <laughs> for hours, hoping to grind out a measly little bit. Yeah, and I'll tell you why this is why I think this is maybe a better one of these. Because the AFK aspect of it. So I'll explain that. When you're not in, even when you're in, you have minions out fighting for you. And they're constantly earning you all the resources you need for gold, for leveling up, all the potions shit, all the 20, you know, every all these games have like a million currencies. And it's out there hammering away on that while you're off uh, or on. So when I come back after a few hours, like I'll do it right now, see right, what I got in there. Um, he's not addicted everybody no not addicted at all a... uh clearly I, I know it won't last so i'm not really worried otherwise I'd be... <laughs> i was talking last. to myself it'd be different but you'll be f- it's you're totally be right you're totally right i'm i can feel already i'm gonna this is gonna get out of my system and i'll move on it's the only phone thing i have going right now really so it's it's sort of taken any of that like oh let me open my phone and check how things are going all right so i'm gonna i even get a little audio going here um Okay, so I'm logging into AFK Journey. Yeah. And everything's very nicely animated, and vo- uh, the whole story's voiced. Like no, they, they you sp- should be ashamed of yourself. They spend, they spend, <laughs> they spare no expense on on what what these kinds of games are. Like they they have not held of back. Of course they don't. I know. I know, know. I know. That- okay. I know what the plan is. I'm just saying, it doesn't. It feels like a polished game. Is all I'm saying. Some most, of these, most of some of these don't. Like, they make money. They make, you know, they definitely, you know, uh, have some good devs and good artists making this. So there's a little guy money. down in the corner. I'm currently at AFK Progress 178. I'm trying to get to 185, but I click on this little, little chest. Listen to this. Hold on. Okay, and I'm gonna claim it all. Here we go. Oh, look at you can't see it, but it's so much stuff. And then, oh, it's just piling into my bags now. And now I've got multiple upgrade paths for multiple characters and. I can just go crazy here. So there's that aspect to it where it's just sort of Tamagotchi. I open it and go, oh, I got a bunch of shit. And then I level up dudes and realize, oh, well, I'm kind of stuck, though, on this next level. So I'm going to not use my phone for the notes today. And then when I go check again, I have enough stuff to, to level dudes. Um, I know that's the plan. That's the way it works. But I am going to say that I think these guys do a really good job. And that AFK aspect is really cool. Other games right. may well, do it. but well, I don't. Let's check in next week and see how it's going. Yeah, we'll if see how if I'm it. still into it or not. If you don't touch it because you get bored of it, then we won't find out. But if you're actually still into the game, yeah, you can tell us how satisfied you are with your progress. Two other things I want to say that I like about it. For those listening who care about this stuff. Instead of worrying about each individual character's inventory, you only worry about five, or is it five or four? Hold on. One, two, three, four, six classes of inventory. So when you get inventory like a new axe, a better axe, or a better pair of boots, or a better cloak, or whatever, you don't have to go hunt down a single dude and say, you wear this, you wear that, none of that stuff. You go into a screen that is class inventory, and you click on support. And support I auto update. I auto equip anything that's better from the last run, and then I have five other icons for each of the other things. One is for mage, one is for warrior, one is for tank, and the other one is for marksman. Oh, and a uh, rogue. And I go in these and I just hit auto equip, and it's done. I didn't have to worry about any of that. And now everybody who is ever of those classes has that gear when they're fighting. Um, another one. Do you Here's, do battles when you play? Like, oh, yeah. What's the main oh, yeah. You go out and you do a little... They're kind of auto battles, but you you can do some manual shit in there, but they're mostly auto, auto by design. Um, I'm trying to think of a game that's that's like that because uh, a lot of them are turn-based. This is not turn-based. It's like real time. Um, then the other thing is that I like about it is you have what is called Hands of Resonance and then Resonance <laughs> Heroes. Yeah, I do. Every now and then. <laughs> when... when, do, when the need arises. Oh, John yeah, gets hands it. of residence. So hands that is residence. that is five characters that I want to keep up in my top slot. And they're going to be the ones that I level up. I never level up any of these other guys. They auto level. If all five of my top dudes are level 75 like they are right now, everybody else in my pool, and it's a deep pool, they all get leveled to 75. So I can swap them out at will. No matter who I get, I get a cool epic one that's hard to get. Sweet. I'll swap them into the top thing. 
and now he's in my fighting group. When I do actual fights, I can choose who fights and when, uh, build your squad on the fly, or always use the same people. But the fact is I only have to manage five characters at once, everybody else in their classes, all these other diverse characters, they all just they all just cascade with the same stuff. I don't have to level them separately. It could have been worse, you guys. Oh, it could have been so they much could worse. Have, they could have made this so much worse. Than it, they if you've played gotcha I'm games... I'm not saying it's good, if but you, I'm saying it could have been so If you've much played worse. a bunch of gotcha games, then you'll know what I mean by how tedious it is to micromanage all these separate characters, which is the point of the game. This game seems to be all about, um, hey, what if we just made a few things like that easier? Like, let's have some life... Uh, what's the word? Quality of life uh, improvements. How what would it be like if you just managed a class instead of fifteen hundred characters who are happen to be that class? It's kind of nice, right? Just get in and automate a bunch of shit. So how many classes are there? Uh, there are a total of six, and that's huh. it. And they all, you know, it's healer, tank, blah so blah. So what, what what do they want you to spend money on? They want you to spend money on the speed at which you acquire the ability to progress through the story, uh, or your AFK hmm. progress. Yeah, Um, Uh, because like I'm telling you, I I stopped playing Warcraft Rumble because the final boss is Anixia, and there's no way it's going to take me 14 months to free me on my way to beat the final boss and be done with the game. Yeah, and um, uh, yeah. So this is basically just just, I'm never going to finish the game. So just if you plan on never swiping, you are never you probably never finishing that game. What I I'm never going to no, there's no way. But the thing I do like about it is I feel like I'm just. The dopamine is me clicking and seeing a number go up, and it's good enough for me on this one. Yeah, so we'll I mean, see. yeah, for sure. Yeah, that's, we'll we'll see how it goes. I'm I, I'm not. I promise nothing. This isn't like my entry into the gotcha world, but of all uh, those I've tried, depends. I've tried the yeah. Marvel one. I tried the freaking Star Wars one. I tried all these ones with fandoms I like. All of them, I hit a brick wall real quick. That uh, Star Wars one's coming to PC. Saw that as a new story. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. <laughs> it's like eight, I think they were saying it's like eight years later, it's finally coming to the PC. This one, this AFK journey might actually be on PC. I'm not sure. Like this screen I'm watching here is not a phone. I don't know who's, I don't know where this I would, is. I would say, oh. don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah. Point is, if you're into them, I'm only speaking to them. If you're into these, this is more generous than most. That's all. That's all I would say. And shame on you. And shame on me for doing it. I already, no, already have... like that's it. If you, those are the only things we want to say to you, to you people out there. Yeah. That like this sort of thing. Shame on you. Scott Pardon recommends it, and shame on you. <laughs> I don't. Know, I like it. It's stupid and it's fun, and I'll probably I've quit already... in another week. So my my gotcha destiny is already mapped out for me. Yeah. Um, yeah. The the next abusive gaming relationship I'll probably flirt with. Maybe not for long. It's going to be Zenless Zone Zero, as I'm still very curious Ooh, about that game. Is that out now? Nope. Okay. I don't think so. All right. But I, and you know, it might be the best case scenario is I play it. It's boring, and I don't play it because I might give that uh, one a try. Because I keep did, saying I'll try yeah. Genshin Impact legitimately, and I keep nah. not doing it. And yeah. so maybe I'll just wait till that comes out, and I'll do that one. Are these but, the same? These are the same people who did Genshin, right? And they're the ones that also did Honkai. Uh, yeah, it's a uh, Hoyo Shmoyo or whatever. Hoyo Shmoyo. <laughs> <laughs> um. I mean, those games are really interesting. I told you about the one last week. I did play that one, the the yeah, Star no, no, Rail. They're, they're quite good, like um, in certain respects. Like uh, Genshin was compelling to play, but it felt very empty. And um, I hate gacha mechanics. So yeah, I, like I still, I'm, this is my I'm, review. Like I see someone, uh, Win Magus in chat says, ah, "I like Genshin, so I'll take the hit." I was not talking to you <laughs> because my experience with Genshin Impact has yeah. been nothing but positive except uh, one of the characters was a little annoying i encountered zero gotcha mechanics in my time granted it's not a long time in the game yeah but i i don't even know how i would have given them money um in the time that i played and i never felt compelled to do it and i had a good time so i i'm not saying that Genshin Impact isn't after your your hard-earned money i'm just saying that in the time i spent with it I, I didn't encounter it. Yeah. Um, and I haven't so encountered that in this fall thing either. Into the, I, I, I will say that. On. Like I have, I haven't, no. I you really haven't said there are 18 different currencies you've encountered. it. Yeah. But none of them 
are I've yet to go to the store thing. I don't even know what's no, for if, sale. If you if you have immunity to swiping, then you have a different experience than other people. In fact, I I'm weak to swipe. Mm-hmm. Like my brain, I, I have a voice I in my head where Spider Man gamer that Star Wars. I have this voice, and the reason why I come out so strongly on them is I have this voice in my head that's like, you know, what you don't need money. What is it good for? <laughs> like, yeah, you get stressed out if you can't make your rent, but you know what's better than spending money on rent? Spending money on stupid video game stuff. Why don't you just buy yourself a nice outfit? Like, I am very susceptible. You know, like in the community episode, like mm-hmm. a level five susceptible. The dean is to. Uh, to, to like marketing yeah, like one guy's just yeah. like i really like this subaru and then he buys a subaru immediately like, <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah like I, like that's me so i've got to put extra <laughs> prophylactic and on when dealing with these games because i am the target dummy for for these uh predatory i'm saying the word predatory they are uh, people um so that's just always my perspective and by the way anyone out there that says wait didn't scott last week have some moral stance on why he wouldn't play dragon's dogma 2 because of microtransactions this isn't a 70 dollar game on my phone it's just a free piece of shit that i will not spend money in all right so just know that yeah i i just i, I know scott has extra immunity stats in his character sheet for these things so <laughs> yeah this isn't yeah scott I don't, actually i, don't, I think I don't he's got better him. resistance than anybody i know yeah, like, exactly it's not hard unless for i'm trying to convince him to buy jana's winter clothes or something <laughs> like he's pretty he's pretty strong john, john is the worst gotcha game i ever faced he got me. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Actually, you've got him to buy lots of shit. Yep. Yeah, Although Scott is my weakness. And lately, every time he talks about a game, yeah, I end up buying it. So I bought Songs of Conquest. Sweet. Ten bucks. I yeah. wish listed so, like, it. So you're halfway there with Scott, me, Scott. Yeah, yeah, for the yeah. past like year, Scott, every week you have me buying something on the store. Like I just I didn't know that. Realize the power you have. <laughs> I, did, I didn't know that. That's but, crazy. And, oh my gosh, he's an influencer. Oh no, shit! I don't oh. want to be one of those. Now that's great. You're not because supposed to use our powers on each other. <laughs> you will legitimately like that game, so I am glad you got it. And it's on sale, it's like time. a massive it's sale. Not like, it's the time. It's the time aspect. It's not, I'm gonna buy it, and not play it. But I didn't realize fine. all of the all the coffee stain games are on sale right now. That's great. Everybody, go get the stuff you're missing yeah. because there's amazing. You haven't played Valheim, like uh, or Dodoy. Deep Rock, or any of these. Yeah, yeah. yeah. freaking great. All right, uh, that's it for what I played. And John, I played a bunch of regular stuff, but I don't, you know, we're not going to go over all that again. Yeah. John, I know you've had a similar uh, how do I scratch the sitch going on. Well, how, how'd no, it go? this week was weird for me because I just hit, I hit, well, weird gaming doldrums. Uh, I'm sure other people have had this where you you sit down, there's a million things you want to play, but you can't bring yourself to play anything. And I just sat down and I was like, all right, well, I don't know what I would feel like playing. So I booted up Baldur's Gate 3 because I've been playing that. And I took like two steps and I got into a cutscene. And somebody told me that there is a, a trick you can do in Baldur's Gate 3 where when a cutscene is playing, there's a button down in the corner where you can click initiate combat. And they said you can use this trick in cutscenes where people might die in the cutscene mm. to start combat early thus it would in theory prevent the death of the character and i was like that sounds awesome because there are a couple times in the game where people die via cutscene and you you think well i certainly wasn't on the ball with this encounter like i should have stepped in and done something mm. uh and i tried it and that's a really cool trick that doesn't work <laughs> It will initiate combat, but the character that died in the cutscene is still dead. Yeah. Um, and so mm. I I got bummed about it, and it put me in a fight that I wasn't really ready to be in, and I was like, I just wasn't feeling good about it. And I was like, I got to restart. I just, I don't like how I encountered this. So I'm just going to, I'm just not going to play Baldur's Gate right now. Yeah. I thought, you know what? It's April. I said frog wrestling was coming back. I'm nowhere near ready because <laughs> the move has taken so long. Right. I'll I'll work on frog wrestling. So I logged into WWE 2K24. I was like, all right, I'm gonna make Brian Ibbett. And I was doing this very detailed like note taking when I went to make characters, and I was like, I'll just wing it. I made Brian Ibbett once, I can make him again. <laughs> I was like, he's easy to remember what I need to do. Yeah. And I so I loaded up the character creator. And I was like, all right, one of the first things it's like, all right, how tall is he? And I'm like, oh. <laughs> I, I forgot to pull up all the detailed information on like 
you know, what did what did he give me as his hometown? What did he give me for his height, his eye color, all of that? And I was like, oh man, I don't remember any of this stuff. And I don't want to close the game and relaunch WWE 2K23 and take notes and do it again. So I closed that. So I was like, all right, um, I'll do Helldivers 2. I've been wanting to get back into that. So I loaded up Helldivers 2. Uh, I went down onto the planet, started a mission solo, real excited. And then my wife walked into the room and she goes, the garage door fell off its track. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. So I got up and went out and had to deal with that. Yeah. And uh, was came back like, you God know. Damn match is done it's uh it's over and i was like okay great uh, what am i gonna do now i'm not gonna do hell divers too because apparently like the ability to sit down and play a game that's persistent that i can't pause isn't possible i was like all right i need to chill out there's garage door problems i'll play no man's sky so i load up my save in no man's sky there you go i'm on a space station i get in my ship I launch my ship. It rises up into the ceiling of the space station and bounces around until it explodes. <laughs> That's funny. Oh and I went, well, I don't feel like playing No Man's Sky right now. Mm -hmm. So I turned off No Man's Sky and I went to bed. <laughs> you found you found a bug in the new feature, which is like way cooler space stations and you died in it. That's so, so good. I was so mad, so nothing really worked. So I tried a whole bunch of stuff, and it wasn't Ugh. really going well. So that night was just gone. So I've been trying to find a game to play. Oh, um, but there are a couple things I do want to talk about. Let's get the let's get the quick, like, well, uh, more than territory done with first. A couple special events and games that I regularly play. They added Korra from Legend of Korra to Fortnite. Yeah. Um, and I was like, I want to have that. Uh, you're you're so, a fan too. Just to be clear here, you like the Legend of Korra. You're you're into I love it. Legend of Korra. Okay. I think Legend of Korra is not as good as Avatar: The Last Airbender, but I think it is very good. Okay. Um, and uh, so I was like, I gotta, I gotta have that. Although I think they're gonna put characters from Avatar: The Last Airbender in the game because. They said a hundred years is almost up, and it's like the block of ice that Aang was in. It's a picture of that, and then it's like on April sixteenth or something like that. They're gonna do an event, and I don't know how I feel about this. For some reason, Korra running around with a gun doesn't phase me. I'm like, okay, that's fine. Mm. She's been through a lot. Sure, she's seen the some idea stuff. of little Aang running around with a gun really bothers me. For some reason, I'm like. What what are you guys gonna do for the Avatar one? I don't know if I'm ready to see Aang and Katara shooting each other with pistols. Like, mm. I, I'm just not sure that's something I need to see. Uh, but for right now, uh, Legend of Korra is in there. You can water bend. Uh, that was a fun thing to unlock, and I did just that. So, so did you? Um, is this you swiping uh, in, in a free to play game? Is that what's? Th that's, no, no, okay. I I had it. Like okay. it's you just do quests. Okay, you can um, earn it. We like that. We like that in our free to plays. Right? Yeah, I, I, you may need the battle pass, but I, I have the battle pass, so I, I don't know. I, it could be just free quest stuff. It could be tied to the battle pass. I don't actually know. Okay. On that. But All right. I didn't have to specifically swipe for Cora. No. Okay. Good. And um, she she does all the bending. I thought. Doesn't she? Isn't she like an she air? She does, but okay. they, so bending is something. So I was water bending as Megatron. Oh my Lord. Uh, <laughs> like, because I, I typically run around as Megatron wearing a giant cape. That's what I, that's my Fortnite skin is I have Megatron and I have a cape that's actually from uh, Shredder from Ninja Turtles. Yeah. And I put it on Megatron because it looks cool. Uh, there's something about robots and capes that I just think is uh, top tier. And uh, I run around as Megatron with a cape. And uh, so, but yeah, water bending is just an item you pick and then you can shoot ice and stuff at people. Okay. But it acts so, like a gun, essentially. Yeah. Right? Okay. Yeah. All right. It's just a gun. Sure. Um, so I've been doing that. Uh, the new season of Fortnite's really good. That's what I'll say. Uh, it's, it's pretty solid. Uh, then. 
There yep. was a, a an event, and I'm sad that I have to say this because Scott, I so wanted you to have to read this sentence and make sense of it. Um, <laughs> yeah. There is an event in Final Fantasy 14, which is a crossover with Final Fantasy 16. And right now you can play a quest line in Final Fantasy 14 where you meet up with good old Clive from 16 yeah. and go on an adventure together. And the end rewards are you get the, the dog from 16 as a mount, uh, a puppy version as a pet, and his outfit. Uh, as well as some soundtrack stuff and all of that is just sort of a celebration of those two games. And I did that. And that was a lot of fun. Although I did have to uh, relearn how to play Final Fantasy XIV because it had been a while since I have had to do any combat related stuff. I'd just been logging in, doing housing, doing holiday events, which typically don't require combat and stuff. All of a sudden I had to fight Ifrit and I was like, oh shoot, I got to push buttons. Uh, but they did some cool stuff where, you know, they gave you a special button that would let you dodge attacks and then uh, do the little dash in and do some special abilities from 16. Um, uh, I do see it in chat uh, talking about Ben Starr. Sadly, Ben Starr not doing the voice of Clive. There is no voice work in it. It's all text. Aww. which I think is a real hmm. missed opportunity because I am sure Ben would be willing to do it because of what a fan he is. I mean, he'd want to be paid. I yeah, of course. He get, should get paid, yeah. <laughs> but I think he would be interested in doing it. It's a, it's so a, it's a me. It's a Clydeo. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Uh, uh, doing, being a Mario in there. <laughs> like, I do, I did miss that a lot. Yeah. Uh, but it was a cool event. Uh, some people were a little upset that they felt that it spoiled Final Fantasy 16, a very, very early plot point in Final Fantasy 16. So that was a weird bit of drama around it, but I had a good, I had a good time with it. That's cool. So you've got, you have the, you have the mount and everything. Yeah. It's a little bit yeah. rude though, right? That yeah. dog, that dog didn't want to be ridden. He's just no, a, he does. Does he? He comes up. He's like, he's he's down for it. He's, he's okay. Like, All, right. All right. Because it's a because it's a 14 mount. It also granted him the ability to fly. Oh well, that's. Oh, that's right, because it's Final Fantasy XIV lets you do shit. Everything flies. Everything doesn't flies. Doesn't matter if it looks stupid, it flies. I, I, so. I kind of, I kind of like that. I'm with you on that. Let me ask you this question. I just saw some of the, um, the combat with a freet, and it looks yeah. really good. Like, yeah, torn right out of the 16 game, which I, it isn't obviously, but this engine's capable of shit sometimes that makes me go, oh. You're holding back. <laughs> Final yeah, there's Fantasy. been a lot of there's been a lot of memes that Clive got the uh, Dawn Trail patch before the rest of us because his character <laughs> model looks so much better than everybody else. Yeah, like he shows up, he's all detailed and high res, and we we look like just flat pixels, and we're like, hi, <laughs> welcome to our land, Clive. So hold on a second, is that part of the new expansion? Is that they're, they're are they revamping uh, models yeah. and stuff? Oh. Yeah, I don't know updated. that. It's not drastic. It's not as drastic as like what WoW went through. But, yeah, um, they're they're doing a graphics overhaul. Um, all the character models are getting touched, and then kind of a slow rollout on armor and world and environment stuff. Do you have any kind of boost that lets people start with that expansion? I know that people poo poo it. Yeah, yeah. Pe people want you yeah. to experience the story. I understand that it's not the same as WoW, but can I go straight to Dawn Trail and just? spend whatever they make you pay you just want to go on vacation right away you gotta <laughs> yeah. you gotta swipe for it like yeah you gotta buy the item I, I here's what i will say i i think skipping in final fantasy 14 does undo the game's greatest strength right. you know it's right. like it's like going to a baseball game and going like well i'm gonna stand out at the hot dog stand and eat hot yeah, dogs. Yeah, I just come to thing. baseball it's for like, the hot dogs. That's it's it. like, okay, like it's understandable, but it's also like, well, why are you here then? You know, if this isn't what you want, why are you here? It's just a little confusing. But if there was one expansion to skip to that I think would make the most sense, I think skipping to Dawn Trail makes the most sense because it's a fresh start. Now, I am sure there is going to be plenty of connections for things that have happened. Obviously, characters from the past are still going to be popping around and talking to you like you're they're familiar with you. But I mean, as far as like an ongoing story, Don Trail is a clean slate start to something new. So I, I think it's the I guess best that's one the, to the weird to. misnomer about it being an MMO as opposed to other MMOs because you know 
you just kind of drop in wherever in Warcraft, you yeah. know, like, but it's basically, it's like a single player game that you have to log in online and see other people. And it sounds yeah. like to me. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so, for sure. It's a RPG first than an MMO second for sure. Yeah. What, you know what? This is a different show. Maybe I wish I would have grokked that earlier in my attempts to play that game. Yeah. Yeah. I just need to face it differently. I need to see it. I need to approach it not with wow head, but no pun intended. Oh, the I, it's the reason why I've played through the campaign twice. Like Final Fantasy story is by no means short. I've done it twice. And it's because the first time I played it, I played it like a wow player. And I was I by the time I was getting to the end, I was like, oh, my gosh, I was playing this so poorly. I didn't I didn't know. Like, WoW does not train you to play Final Fantasy correctly. Um, in fact, it kind of sets you up to fail at it because, you know, a WoW, who cares? Like, if a secondary character comes up to you and is like, Champion, we've got to go. They, they took the jade from the pandas. Yeah, You're you like, go, okay. accept. Yeah, shut All right, up. Yeah, accept. accept. Yeah. Let me go get yeah. the... You don't think that that guy's going to be super important 18 hours down the line and be a linchpin of a major story beat later and it will absolutely happen so right right i mean um, storytelling on that level is actually kind of impressive if you if you know that's what you're doing because if you go in just thinking oh i skip everything and just do shit and it's mechanics and now i got a cool cape that isn't what this is it was never that but it was hard for me to it was hard for me to see past that i think i could approach it differently now in yeah. fact, I bet I could finish 16 now with my new attitude, my weebish. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I think That'd I could do it. Now. I might go do that. <laughs> I might go in there. Scott, I, may, I may slot a couple of gems in that sword that makes things a little less stupid. But It's about having fun. Right. Like, that's the thing. I don't understand this, like, weird feeling of, like, oh, I don't want to make the video game fun. Yeah. Like, how did we get to a point where we wanted to train ourselves that way? Now, that doesn't mean that challenge equals not fun. I love Dark Souls. It's one of my favorite games to go back to, and I love it because it's challenging and hard. But sometimes you don't want that. Yeah. Sometimes you just want to play a game and escape and have a good time, and I don't think there's anything wrong with allowing yourself to do that, and don't let anybody tell you otherwise. Damn straight. Screw you guys who are saying that, that we just straw manned up and made up. We don't know who you are, but yeah, I agree with John. Yeah, this, this, this person is a <laughs> jerk. Yep. He's got red um, hair. Uh, he's about uh, six foot two. Uh, I don't know. We know whether he's Tom married. Cauldron from Canada. Yeah. Take Tom that. Cauldron? Tom yeah. Cauldron. <laughs> All right. F you, Tom. Yeah. Cauldron. Tom Cauldron. Yeah. Tom Cauldron. So I'm glad we broached the issue of playing games your way, though. Because let me talk about the last game that I played. Okay, go. I, I played Dragon's Dogma 2 this week. Whoa. <laughs> right. Talk about bearing the lead. Is like uh, people. Well, I wanted to get you. the other stuff out of the way People first. were outing you on core in the core chat channel. Yeah. yeah, they were. People they really were excited were. that I was playing People Dragon's were like Dogma stalking, too. cyber stalking you on Steam to be like, Look at the hypocrite! Look at the hypocrite! Yeah, a whole bit, I saw no, one of them was like, "Look at this guy! Look at it's a uh, April Fool's best April Fool's joke." Was my favorite thing in Discord. I was like, the, "But the thing is, is it's not hypocritical." No, I said, "I, know. I, I, I said no. I didn't play I it because uh, I'm not saying I, it because it's accurate." I'm saying I know, it because... but I let me let me address it. So for anybody that's okay. like, "Man, what a fast turnaround!" John certainly changed that. Uh, here, I, I here's what I said last week. For those that don't remember, yeah, I refunded the game because I knew it would stress me out, especially the inability to start a new game over if you mm. didn't say didn't like the way your character looked. Yeah, it's kind of your built-in uh, thing. John does this with every game ever made. So yes, yeah. as somebody who has started Mass Effect approximately seven thousand three hundred and fifty-two times, <laughs> but finished it maybe a hundred man yeah. think of all the uh, money EA could have made. <laughs> like, <laughs> right i i had serious concerns about the inability to start a new game that functionality was patched i don't know if it was patched that night the next day it was patched very close to when we did our show yeah. um mm -hmm. they they removed that restriction and you can start a new game whenever you want 
Um, they also did a little work with the saves. Um, I And that was never the issue for me because I did also see a couple people going, the one save thing is actually good. I don't mind having one save file. I actually tend to only do one save file in a lot of video games just out of habit. But um, my big issue was I know me and I know starting a game over is something that I need to do. Sometimes I just need to be able to hit the reset switch. Right. And let me tell you, I've used that functionality twice in this game so far already. So uh, it was clearly something that needed to be done. Yeah. Um, I did start playing Dragon's Dogma 2. It got patched. My biggest complaint is gone. I really don't care about the microtransactions. I know it's not going to hit me. That doesn't mean I'm okay with them existing, but it, it's just not going to be a factor for me. I'm not going to buy the things. Right. So... I'm not worried about that. Right. So I picked up the game, and for anybody that's looking for, finally, Core's going to talk about something besides microtransactions. Finally, <laughs> they're going to talk about Dragon's Dogma 2. I got bad news for you all. Uh-oh. I've wiped three times now on the character creation <laughs> screen. <laughs> oh. The... Oh, you didn't get to the game? You the, the no, no. <laughs> The first night I sat down and I was like, maybe it would be a fun activity for my wife and I to try and make me in the game mm. and we'll do it together. And I was like, it's about an hour before it's really late and we should definitely go to bed. We can make a character in an hour. Hours is a long time. Yeah. We were not done and it had been an hour and a half and I was like, we got to go to bed. <laughs> like we're, we're not being responsible enough. We got to go to bed. We got to try again tomorrow because we we thought we made me and we looked at it as like, it doesn't look like me, though. And I know I can make a character that looks like me in this game because I've seen what the character creator can do. It's crazy um, what it can do. So, yeah, you absolutely can. But maybe not in so, one night, I guess. Not in one hour. So uh. then I went back to it. I tried again the next day and I just was like, I'll live with it. And I was not happy. I was derping around. I looked maybe, awful. Maybe, and I was like, maybe this will help you a little bit. Do you know if the game will show your face a lot? Because sometimes you spend a lot of time in mm. your character creator, depending on the game where you look good. And then you get in the game and you're just an amorphous blob. And you're like, why did I spend all that time when I can barely see what it looks like? Yeah. And they, they've downscaled like the resolution on my face, you know? Right, well, right. I'll... I'll get to that in a minute. Like, I will address that in a second here. So, okay. So I tried again. It didn't look good the next day. Yeah. I was like, all right, I'll just make a, a handsome character. <laughs> Stop yeah. trying to make myself. I'll just make a handsome You're going to make Tom Cauldron. <laughs> so, yeah, I'll make Tom Cauldron <laughs> and uh, made Tom Cauldron. And I was like, I still don't like it. I was like, I, I tend to like playing as a, as a female character anyway. Maybe I'll just make... You know, my my default uh, when I just can make any character in the world is I tend to make a character that looks like either Wonder Woman or um, uh, what's her name from Assassin's Creed? Oh, um, um, uh, Ivar? No, not Ivar. The good one. The, um, um, uh, the oh, oh, Cassandra, oh, Cassandra, 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 Cassandra. Cassandra. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> sorry, That's, I don't. Uh, know Ivar, Ivor. 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 I think her name is Ivor. Ivor. Um, so I made a character like that, that I felt was okay. I did it quick because I did it before core today. Cause I was like, I've got to get some time in this game so I can talk about something more than the character creator. So I raced, I was like, please let me do this. Let me get this done. So I just made a character. I got in there Yeah. and we started, I, I started, I fought a, there. so yes, you do see your character, and I immediately felt the, the mass effect, like, oh, that character doesn't look right. Mm. I got to change it. And then, mm, but then I was like, no, power, power through it, man, power through it. <laughs> you got to get past this. So then I, I forced my way through the cutscene. I wandered out, uh, a Medusa attacked I fought a Medusa. Yeah. I jumped off a cliff. Not the Medusa, a, but a Medusa, right? A Medusa. Okay. Yeah. Right. okay. And uh, got carried away by a griffin. The griffin got shot down. A dude drowned in a lake. Lots of stuff was popping off. I was like, great gameplay. We're going to talk about it. I got to, like, the. there's a cut scene. They take you to town, and they're like, Ah, you are an arisen. You must summon a pawn. And I was like, oh, sweet, I'm going to summon a pawn. And it's like, 
do you want to create your own customized pawn? Oh, and shit. I was like, oh, no. And it took me right back to the character creator again. Oh, my and gosh. I was like, oh, man, I'm never going to get through this. Nobody <laughs> warned us. that I didn't know about this. That the, no, the... I, I was vaguely aware that you can customize your pawns, and that was a mark in the, Holy I don't think I'm going to play this. because I don't want to have to design all my pawns, too. So, maybe some people like that. I you mean, know, you just randomly you generate do, them. You can do, like, it, it's not mandatory. You can pre-select. Oh. In fact, I think you're maybe even supposed oh, yeah, you to can play as, like, recruit Asmongold. the guy who drowned in the river or something, because, like, They had a this bunch game of streamers has... that you can you can be yeah right? you can be asthma gold which is fine this game has a lore reason i th i think i don't know i might be talking out my ass at this level in the game it seems like this game has a lore reason for why they didn't put swimming in the game like as soon as you start to get into deep water there's a there's this creature that just kills you <laughs> Like, oh, it's it, not a, it's not a plate mail realism kind of thing because that, no, that's like, it's like that's it's, one of the most egregious anachronisms in all of medieval style gaming is swimming in plate mail. Yeah, right? like, yeah, that's why but, Helldivers okay. Helldivers is pretty good about that. It's not plate mail, but all that heavy equipment you and you're like screwed. Stone. Yeah, it's yeah. pretty good. I like that. Yeah, this is like there's a there's creatures called the churn. I think is their name, and mm. like they live in deep water. But it turns out it doesn't even have to be that deep of water. Uh, and they, like, they can be in the crick. <laughs> yes, and they will just come out and get you if it's if you start to get too deep, and that's what happens to your buddy at the beginning. I think he might be the pawn that you're like you can summon at the beginning. Yeah. If you don't customize him, but I'm going to customize him now. I do want to give this game credit though because before I don't know how long before, but well before the game came out, they did release the character creator with the ability to make your character and your pawns before the game was actually mm -hmm. out. That's true. That's an amazing yep. feature, especially for how robust it is, like to give people a head start so they don't have to do what I'm doing. But I didn't do that, obviously. And here I am. Well, you're now... busy. You, you're a professional <laughs> video game player. You got other shit oh, to do. Yeah. yeah now and now I'm I'm reaping what I sowed by ignoring that because I was just like, oh no, I'm not gonna get through this before core. Yeah. So I turned the game off. So uh, yeah, like, but I will say this. Kind of it's in shambles because cool. you got to make a whole bunch of dudes in wrestling, and now you got to make a whole bunch of dudes in. Yeah, Dragon your whole Sogma. life is like create characters. Like, that's your, your life's whole thing. falling apart right now. Yeah, because yeah, it's all creators. character creation right now. That's crazy to me. And that's not even talking about like I keep saying very casually. I've been playing Baldur's Gate three. I started that game. I'm dead serious. Probably six times. Good lord. And it's not like it was super experimental. Like in those six times, I think only four or three different classes were represented. Yeah. It was all character customization stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I, I relate. I, I made like eight or nine for BG three as well before settling on characters. I my, my first character was a blonde orc. A blonde half orc that was a monk. And you call him wore, a he was blork? Just wearing underwear. I can't what? He's a blork. Blonde orc is yeah, a blork. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He had long blonde hair, and I was like, man, I've never seen a blonde orc. That would that would be what they'd call him, right? Like the blonde orc, like in Lord of the Rings time. They just I was like, there's no blonde orc. Myth. Even Warcraft hasn't done a blonde orc. Like That's even true. Yakuza's done a blonde orc. There's one blonde character, like Ryuta Goda, who's distinctive because everyone has black hair except that one character. Who's the blonde guy? And I'm yeah. like Man, Warcraft needs a blonde orc. Yeah, we Anyways, need a blork. Not to derail the conversation too much, John. Sorry, but no, yeah. no, no. I relate fine. to Baldur's Gate. Like that's why I'm saying, like your life, it's kind of a suffering in a way. Like when you get, <laughs> yeah, you can't start a game because you are just spending all this time making, yeah, making, making your dude exactly. And, and you've got, like, it's not yeah, like you've got, you, it's like, like you don't have a kid. Too. You're trying to teach how to do proper potty training, and you just moved. Like the real life shit. Plus that, I don't know how you get anything done. I don't. A... That's why my what I played is a bunch of stories about me not playing video games. Man, you know what? <laughs> this, is, this is a side tangent. You know how hard it is sometimes to name your kids? Yeah, it can like be. When you're about yeah. to have a kid. Mm -hmm. Imagine we live in a world where we can make like genetic choices. Yeah. You know, like because that's kind of like that the real world character creator, like John would 
your head would explode. Well, what's this that? is why like people are like, what superpower would you love to have? Or like, and I was like, I, I've always like, it wouldn't be my first choice. Cause like, yeah, flying, like if you get to pick from all of them, it'd be really cool. But I've always like mystique's power to just shape shift. I'm like, oh, that'd be so cool. Because yeah, I feel so like nice. it would address a very specific hang up that I have, which is like, constantly needing and you'd have a leak. whole collection of presets too like yeah you'd be yeah, working be on amazing. this all the time so mm -hmm. yeah. i'd be too lazy and i just have one and i'd be like what's the point of the superpower <laughs> every time i see somebody play mass effect and they've got default shepherd running around i look at them the same way you look at somebody that bites a twix like in the middle yeah. like i just right i had to do it. that because let me defend my i'm not i know you're not pointing <laughs> me out but i want to defend my choice one more time <laughs> i went with basic Back in the 360 days, I did something different for Shepherd. the remake, but I played regular old Shepard because mm -hmm. Shepard, it looks like that on the cover. And to me, I'm playing this character that I've seen in the cutscenes, that I've seen in the trailers. I saw at the E3 presentation. Yeah, fair. It felt weird to not be that guy. So that's why I chose him. Fair. It's not because I wasn't yeah. feeling creative. I just Although, didn't. Feel I really right. appreciated that they had two versions of the cover for Mass Effect. Three. Yeah. That was Shepard cool. Yeah. Shepard. That's I, I true. Really appreciated that. Yeah, they yeah. That I thought that but was anyways, nice. Yeah. And then they started making merchandise that included the uh, the female version of Shepard, which was uh, was really cool. It mm. it led to me getting this. Oh, you got a little something. I have this right next to my desk. Oh, oh. look at you, dude! Look so at this. this is, your this wife, is wife a who? variant of the official Shepard, which the only thing they changed was they gave her black hair and green eyes, which is exactly what my Shepard had. I She's like, anime as hell, though. Well, Look at her. I'm swiping on that. Yeah. Because uh, that is that it feels like that's my Shepard. She looks like, like a basically. she looks like an assassin in uh, some anime. That's what she looks like. That's, there. that's fine. I'm not. I'm not yeah, no, that's scared her, that's of her the her anime. Seven, <laughs> <I'm not>. yeah. <laughs> You're not afraid of these big eyed yeah. anime ladies at all. You're into it. You're into it, man. That's great. I didn't know you had that. That's the first I've seen that thing. Nicely done. Anyway, so Given so a position of power. So really, yeah. as far so, as you've gotten is some character creation, but you're just gonna you're gonna keep hacking away at that. How many pawns do you have? Like, can you have up to like four? Like I think it's four. I think there's right. like five character creation screens in total. There's you and four pawns. I'm looking forward to the game review in like two months. So. <laughs> I don't know if it's gonna be so much character creation. Oh my gosh. I think I'm going to just download the separate app where you make the things and I'll make it there and then I'll play the game once mm. I've got it made Yeah, and all planned out. All right. I'm excited for more from Dragon's Dogma 2. Yeah. And yeah. I, I saw somebody say it's not called the churn. It's called the brine. I probably got a lot of facts wrong. I mostly spent my time in player or in character creation. Uh, so, you know, I, I haven't locked down all the terms and facts about the game. I'll get there once I can actually play it. But so far, all I've done is fight a Medusa. I'm going to be honest. I don't think she was fighting back very hard. Mm. Side, side note, is Medusa a proper... i three hours. Is calling them a Medusa like calling a vampire a Dracula? Oh, yeah, yeah it is, I think. Yeah, Medusa's yeah, an actual they're, individual. They're a Gorgon. They're yeah. a Gorgon. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah whereas right. vampire... So I be know guy. better. I'm doing it. Um, no, I did it too. D and D, I called people. the character the Metal Medusa, and it should have been Metal Gorgon. So you know, yeah. yeah. I, well, I will say this: Brian's fine. That's a fine name, but I like John's Churn better. That's a cool name for a for a weird water based mm -hmm. enemy type. I like that. The Churn. Churn. Yeah. That's a badass. Someone, yeah. someone's gonna take that and use it for like a Halo enemy or I'm something. I'm sure somebody already has. I'm sure there's. The Churn is cool. Already. Do you guys know? Someone look that up because if not, John should get royalties. That's good. It's a, it's a sales term. Yeah, the, yeah, it is actually. But I like the idea of like, ooh, a weird space, uh, you know, group has come to attack our planet base. What's uh, who, like what the are flood, they? Flood, but it's the churn. Yeah, the <laughs> churn. Basically, just the flood, but the churn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's the so two ideas one, with a new name or the same idea, new name. I like it. Uh, well, anyway, I wish you luck, John, on your journey. Thank you. Maybe next week I will have played a video game. Yeah, your fourth hour will be way better than the first three. Well, not better, yeah. but different, perhaps. Uh, Bo, you've been uh, sitting on these games for a, a minute. Week. Yeah, what'd yeah, you do? So how'd, how'd it go? I'm, my my interest is in full revolt. Like obviously, there's games that I've been interested in playing, like Final Fantasy VII and Yakuza. I just don't want to play them. I don't know why. I just can't do it. I just can't play them right now. It's yeah. not. 
you know that whole it's not the itch thing but sometimes you're like i want to play them but also i don't want to play them so i'm not going to play them yeah what's going on with me yeah um <laughs> so day nine uh you know, everyone here knows day nine sean plot mm-hmm. by his real yeah he's up. doing a month of going back to play blizzard games he hasn't played in a while i just happened to catch devon on a recommendation and he was playing hearthstone and opening he had like 500 packs or something like that and i was just laughing because he hasn't played it in like five years or more or something like that good lord all right and it got me thinking i was like oh yeah hearthstone has a single player mode uh where you can you know, I just I logged in because I was curious, and I was like, I kind of want to do a dungeon run. Mm. So I played a couple dungeon runs of Hearthstone. And yeah, of Hearthstone, like the single player. It's my favorite part of Hearthstone is the single player. The for a period of time, they don't do them anymore. Um, they had some of these roguelike dungeon runs that you would do, and they got better and better, and then they just stopped making them. Why? Who knows? They weren't making enough money off them. They needed to make a gotcha game. I called, you know, mercenaries, which was terrible, um, is terrible. Uh, but anyways, I, I'm like, I still haven't, you know, finished stuff. So I logged in, played that for a little bit. And then I noticed uh, while I was getting, I was like, oh, this is a good time. Like, I'm really compelled. And I did a few runs and, you know, it was, and I was like, there's a deck builder sale on Steam. Holy <laughs> shit. And I was like looking at all the deck builder, like deck builder games I had passed and stuff. And anyways, I blew $150 oh, on deck man. builder games on sale. I bought, I bought a shitload. I was just like, I want to play deck builders. Uh, so, uh, Did you get any of the happened. porny ones? Because I went there and I was shocked at how many porny games were on the Deck no. Builder sale list. No. There are a lot more no. than I thought. You're right, I'll, John. I yeah. got solid gold for everyone, guys. If you're looking forward to listening about some new games, I've got some big ones. So okay. I, I'm okay. going to run them down. First one, not really a Deck Builder, but it was part of the turn-based sale. Um, an incredible game. Yeah, dude. It, I, Shogun awesome. Showdown. Yeah, I love this game. Holy smokes. I haven't liked the game this hard in a little while. Maybe the top of 2024. This is a turn-based tactical game where you are a a samurai or a ninja or whatever character you pick. It's roguelike. You get random tiles, and those are your moves. They're almost like dice, right? Kind of a little bit, sort of, right? No, they don't roll randomly at all. I mean, they're more like cards than dice, but it's just you don't draw from a deck or anything. That's true, yeah. So let me scale it back. It's turn-based, meaning every move, left, right, even turning around to face left or right, counts as a move. And when you move, all your enemies move. And the idea is you've got to queue up your moves to defeat them while dodging their attacks. It's basically a turn-based Sekiro. I mean, it, it's you know, it's, what's it's the, very basic. What's but, the mech game by the FTL people? I always forget the name. Um, uh, for the... <laughs> PC oh, game. Um, know yeah, you know what I'm talking it's about? Really, really yeah. good. I love. Yeah, that. it's a lot like that. The, for, for the no, no, not that. What is that oh. called? What's Late? the name of that damn Cheater. game, guys? Can't think of the game. But this has um, a bunch of that shit. Uh, the the vibe of this is very similar in terms of like how how you move and think ahead and queue up. It's very similar because right, you know, like yeah, you, you want to be where you want to be before they before you're in the place you want to be. Uh-huh. You want them to. It's hard to explain. In, into the breach. Is the into the epic yes. breach. Jeez. Yeah. You ba- you basically your your units of resource are just it's the move. And one one of the ways that you have to queue up moves is you can queue up as many moves as possible, but queuing costs a turn. Reordering doesn't. But like there'll be multiple enemies and your attack goes off first. So there'll be like this little bastard that's getting queued up a charge. The enemies do the same moves as you, so it's not it's like they're playing the same game as you. They'll queue up a move to charge, but they can't charge because their buddy's in the way. So if you just queue up a move and attack the buddy, then the charge guy on his turn is gonna charge you and you don't have reaction time. So you gotta think ahead and put in an attack move and then a ranged move. And then when you execute your actions, you execute them all at once, and you can take out multiple guys with your, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And it's very satisfying to do that, because then you're just, like, like, queued up a couple moves, and it went poof, poof, poof. And it's roguelike in that with every stage you complete, you get new abilities, you can upgrade the abilities. All the staples of the roguelike genre are here, and then the enemies get progressively harder, new enemies are introduced, and new bosses, and then you unlock shit. The whole loop is there. 
it's a very simple game, but the the uh, the soundtrack's decent. The presentation is excellent, like the little, little animations and stuff. Yeah, and it's tactically very satisfying. It's a bit draining. I, so far, I can only play this game for two hours at tops, and my brain's like tapped out. I need something easier to play because it is very much a think five steps ahead. Oh yeah, it's basically a chess like game of strategy where you got to think some moves ahead and execute them correctly it always sucks when you forget a step and it throws off your timing and you get like pummeled and you're just like no (laughs) but um when you execute things it feels really good love this game um highly recommended big agree this game is rad i'm terrible at it uh i'm bad at thinking too many moves ahead like the thing you're talking about it somehow manages still to be fun and i think short bursts is smart though you don't want to you know Spend days it's just I find it exhausting. Like I'm just like, oh my god! Like it's cool you know, though. You gotta, it, when there's multiple enemies and you're trying to think through what they're all going to do and then what you're going to do to beat them, it can get a bit tiring. Yeah. Uh, I just found it tiring. I was like, I have to do something either. See, I just messed up and I didn't queue up enough moves and that guy got me. Yep. So you it's know, frustrating. You gotta like, yeah. Really good game though. Anyway, I agree. Awesome, awesome pick. So I moving, s- moving yeah. down the deck builders list. So then after that, I logged into. Uh, there's a new. Uh, there's a new Slay the Spire in town. Um, uh, a little game called Spell Rogue, and it's a hybrid of Dicey Dungeons and Slay the Spire. It has the classic Slay the Spire gameplay in terms of you go through three maps, you make choices. You get shit, you move up. The difference is you don't have a deck you draw from. You just have seven, you know, strategy boxes. You can call them cards if you want. Um, And then you take those and uh, move them. You, you, You roll dice at the start of every turn, and then you drop those dice into what's there is my uh, link not working no oh, I, I, I sorry it was a timestamp thing and it goofed but we're good now okay yeah, cool cool it's coming around. um yeah so basically you know you roll dice and what's interesting about this one is you could like upgrade the dice like you can have ephemeral dice you can have dice that you can't spend like th- that does a lot of interesting things with dice and then there's like all different ways to spend the dice to do the moves the rest of the package is basically Slay the Spire. You have buffs and debuffs. They have buffs and debuffs. They show their intent. You got to strategize based on their intent. Mm. You get rewards after every battle, et cetera, et cetera. It's, it's literally Slay the Spire, except uh, graphically, looks good. <laughs> <laughs> one, 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 one aspect that didn't follow in Slay the Spire is kind of having not the best graphics. Yeah. And um, well, I wouldn't necessarily rave about the graphics it does look nice like it's a very pleasant uh, game to look at and i i like it so yeah this looks neat yeah. I, I the other day i was like craving dice games like something i even played a little uh play this, this, is, aw- this is it, it looks solid. great yeah i love i love yeah. dice mechanics and games like this so i'm in yeah no it's fun i it was a big winner there's three classes too i only played the water mage but there's an earth mage and a fire mage and um you're just a wizard that does wizardy things with dice do you know if it's solid still game still on sale uh, yeah. or, or how's it i don't know if this i don't think the sale's happening anymore but um if you you know like slay the spire and dicey dungeons you know uh, buy, buy the game play it i did enjoy it i I thought I'd play a few rounds and log off, but it turns out I did a whole run to Act 3 and ended up playing for four hours and liked my time. But I spent $150, so I had to move on to other games (laughs) because I wanted to try (laughs) as many of them while I had the momentum as I had. Um, uh, So that's Spell Rogue. The next game was that I tried was Fights in Tight Spaces. And um, this is a game that has been on my radar for a long time, but I never could pull the trigger on. It was on sale. Uh, I got to say... This one was just okay. Um, oh, really? Okay. People rave about this one, but it felt like there was a lot of gimmick going on. I was worried about that. One, I think it's more mechanical. So, as you know, I don't. I'm not a big fan of games that don't use all the colors, and this is definitely a game that's like <laughs> only thinks three colors exist. Um, you know, so not my favorite aesthetically. I always forget this detail about Bo, and I always find it incredibly funny whenever I'm reminded of it. <laughs> <laughs> So I was not a big fan of um, that. But, you know, it's not going to put me off this game. It did look interesting. Um, and But the thing, like, it was okay. I think the thing I didn't really appreciate about the game is um, 
movement cost cards and you know so if you want to dodge or get out of the way sometimes you just don't have the cards to get out of the way and that feels a little too rng for my tastes Mm. i was very frustrated when i just couldn't avoid 14 points of incoming damage because well i just don't happen to have a step card in my hand and i didn't like that yeah yeah I, I, i i is a little too rng i don't I don't think I don't personally I don't think mixing movement with RNG is good. Like I get the other stuff for RNG and appreciate those kinds of things, but when you're sort of hybridizing these things, it can feel really bad when you either have too many movement cards in your hand and not enough attacks or vice versa. It's just it doesn't line up. Um they are making another game though called Knights in Tight Spaces, which is a medieval <laughs> version of this game. Yeah, I love still that. Still sound compelling, so I may still give them my money. Yeah, but um, I think overall it, this wasn't my favorite of the bunch. Uh, but yeah. I love that they're calling it Knights in Tight Spaces. Yeah, I don't know why. It's pretty it's... cool, and it's full color, so that also has my interest. Like, mm. so I may still, you know, I think I may still give them my money, but. Um, uh it wasn't my favorite out of everything i tried mainly because of those mechanical reasons didn't feel good sure so as i was going through my list of purchased games um i also happened to notice i had some old card games that i hadn't played so i reinstalled a couple of those as well so next on the list and the game i got stuck on putting in a lot of hours this week is uh one that uh, you uh, made by a company you quite like clay which is uh love this game yeah so i forgot um that i didn't finish the third campaign with smith who's the alien looking guy right Ray smith which two-eyed is funny. guy yeah um and uh i got just instantly hooked i did a full run and then i did so this game has prestige levels a lot of these games do where you can crank up the difficulty right so mm-hmm. i ended up playing and moving up the difficulty levels and stuff but um i gotta say griff lines is like a master class in the genre of game like i feel like it doesn't get talked about too much um a lot of people in my chat room while i was playing it on on stream saying like oh this is a game like it's just too hard for me i had to say no to it Mm -hmm. um i i don't find it that complicated um but it's the overall package is really good. Like it's really interesting how there's three different stories, random events happen with all the characters and whether they like you or hate you has an effect on your buffs or debuffs. Right. And you can't get away with making everybody like you. But also if you become, uh, you can choose to kill people or to just accept their surrender. So if you execute people, when they surrender you get known as a killer and you get these unremovable cards in your negotiation deck which there's two card games in this game one is battle yeah with guns and shit and the other is uh arguing you know <laughs> making arguments like yeah. postulating uh, uh arguments and attacking their arguments with counter arguments and winning the social battle which is I just love this game. You know so why? Much. You know what? I thought so back when I talked about this game a couple of years ago yeah. on the show, um my f- initial thought when I played it was, well Bo will love this because it's the D&D, it's the card playing uh deck building equivalent of the D&D experience of yeah. you're making us have a conversation and roll dice to resolve the fight yeah. or the argument or the discussion and they've you, somehow you have, managed to do it it's crazy how well yeah, implemented like you, it is. you have to like to develop a strategy for beating their arguments it's just in cards instead of actually having the conversation yeah it's really I interesting just think as i replayed this one what i really appreciated is that diff- it's always the same story like they take that whole step of going from the bottom of the dungeon to the top like slay the spire does and they turn it into a story that plays out differently every time because you can choose to side with different npcs and then different bosses come out as a reaction like there's still i've played all the stories there's still over half the characters in the game i haven't even encountered yet right. or maybe like 40 percent, like in the unlocks and i'm like i still haven't seen 40 percent of the characters i still haven't seen over half the bosses in this game i'm like wow this is like it's just a real gem you know the soundtrack's good i like the lore of the story of pearl on the phone um and the races and stuff like it's 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 a really really good game so i didn't get to the other card games kind of like john got stuck in character creator (laughs) i got stuck in grifflands because grifflands was uh just so awesome 
and I've still been also playing some co-op commander because I don't know. I just love Starcraft guys. Yeah. But, um, but, uh, yeah, I've spent a lot of time in Grifflands. I got stuck in Grifflands. So that's, it's a, so, it's that was a my very weekend game. cool game. You're making me want to play Grifflands again. Cause I really liked it at the time. Yeah. Awesome, Grifflands. It, it's worth. Have you done all of the campaigns? Because I was even shocked that I would only done two of the three. Campaigns I have two. I think I'm in the same place. I did two of the three. Never did the alien yeah. guy. I don't think he was done when I was playing because it was oh, I was playing be. in early access at the time. He's great. He's got a family. The rest of his family hate him, and they, you get you know cut out of the will basically. And you know you end up talking to your siblings and eventually leveling up and beating them in negotiation battle and. and my ending on that run was like, oh, we were all we we're all good, and I even saved the brother that hated me because he was possessed by an alien dude. Yeah, but you can have a conversation and, and win. Like everything's solvable either through violence or through negotiation, which is just like an when you're making a game, it's it just feels like it's why don't we double how hard it is to make this yeah. game? I do yeah. putting two card games. But it makes it awesome. It you really is, choice. and it's a, it's yeah. even another it's another layer to say, okay, it's basically two card games with two very different approaches. But also, it needs to be like this world needs to be kind of a big world story, and it does that successfully. Mm -hmm. And then it also somehow manages to tell unique stories every playthrough, even though yeah. it's sort every, of set up to every, be the same story. Everyone it's, you fight is crazy. also a person in the world. Like, it's not a random monster. There's a few monsters, but mostly it's people. It's NPCs you're fighting. And when you kill them, they always have friends, and those friends hate you because you killed their friend. So there's, like, always these consequences occurring. It just makes it really interesting as you're progressing through rather than just, oh, here's a generic blob monster 52. Like, okay, I killed him. Everything's like a, eh, should I fight him? He seems like a nice guy, but it's a hard world. I guess I'm going to I'm gonna have to murder this guy and get his sweet loot. Yeah. Um, I'd love yeah, a series, an animated series in this world would be so awesome. I would love that. Yeah, I I think so. It it feels it's a bit of an original take. It actually most matches are campaign in that it's like a post apocalyptic mm -hmm. world, but it has alien races in it. Right. So it's a weird Mad Max slash I don't know Mass Effect Star Trek kind of world maybe. Yeah, it's like all that. kind of shit I love. I love this kind of crap. Uh, well, that's great. great. So uh, I had a good time. Nice. Yeah, and that Make was my week. Nice. Oh, and, and so phase three is out today, so I'm probably going to be playing some World of Warcraft tonight. Oh, we'll look for look for more phase three in Bo's world of streaming. <laughs> uh, that is uh, time for us to take a break. When we come back from this break, we got some Dear Martha gamer drama to deal with. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, gamer drama, the best kind of drama there is. I'm, sc <laughs> I'm scared. I'm terrified. Uh, but that'll be after this break. Uh, we have uh, some other stuff, too, to sum up. Great phone calls, other cool things. So stick around. We'll be right back. <laughs> uh, all right, we're back. Let's see, are we back? No, we're not. And we're back, everybody. Welcome back to the 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 program. It's time for us to keep keep moving. We got a dear Martha. People are like, "Where's dear Martha lately? What's going on?" It's fine. Don't worry, we got her. Martha's moving. <laughs> yeah, she's Martha, not getting her mail. <laughs> she's moving and shaking is what Martha's doing. But she's back. And uh, well, John, I'll let you explain. What are we? What are we doing today? Well, uh, reading through the contest entries, there were a lot of kind things said about Dear Martha, but there was certainly uh, a consensus based on the Dear Martha responses, which was people miss the old ad lib days of Martha not being a magazine review or a Steam review, but just sort of me just doing a, a random Dear Martha letter. And right. I thought in honor of those people that missed it, yeah. Maybe we could try that again for a little bit, because the biggest issue was always that Scott would never pick a topic. He'd forget, and we'd just forget it. So we leave it in the show notes, Yeah, and we will just pick a random gamer drama topic to do uh, Dear Martha on. Now, because they didn't know we were doing this, this week is still going to be ad-libbed. But I've already picked a topic this week, unless you gentlemen would like to see something. No, else. I'm happy with whatever you have, Jump Bo. Do you have any as a dissent? Uh, no, no. I, yeah, no. Please yeah. lay it on us. Take it away. So, Show us uh, the way. Yeah. So there's nothing written for this, but uh, so the idea is that in the future, either Scott and Bo can pick the topic, or maybe I can give them a couple things where it's like, hey, here's some drama that I actually know about because you know I don't live perpetually on the internet. It's, no. Good for you, by the so, way. Um, I might not know what all the internet drama of the day is, but I do know one that was particularly stupid this week. 
I've already mentioned it, and I figured that's what this week's Dear Martha could be about. Excellent. Here comes your music. My dearest Martha, I have to tell you, I was very excited this week. Final Fantasy XIV. Getting an update. An exciting update. Where I would finally be able to take my Warrior of Light and be joined by Clive from Final Fantasy XVI on my adventures. Mm. Martha, I can't tell you how excited I was. I mean, Final Fantasy XVI, this game came out almost a year ago. That's right, a whole year ago this game came out, Martha. And finally, I was going to be able to join Clive and do business. <laughs> But Martha, it was not all fun and games. Can you believe they spoiled the game in the crossover event? I was shocked. Martha, he flat out says that he's a freak in the quest. Whoa. A fact that Final Fantasy 16 oh, doesn't shit. reveal until almost a quarter of the way through the game. I didn't Unless, know Unless, of course, you read the back of the box or <laughs> any summary of the story or looked at any official art which very clearly showed Clive transitioning into Ifrit. But ignoring all of that, Martha, this was a big surprise and it has been taken away from me. I will never be able to be somewhat surprised by the rising action point of a video game plotline now. <laughs> what do they think I am? Made of money? Yes, I pay $15 a month for my Final Fantasy XIV subscription, but I can't afford a PS5. I had to wait for the PC version, which still hasn't come out. This is outrageous, Martha. <laughs> Not only that, but who has time to go through two Final Fantasies. I can't be expected to keep track of all this information. Yoshi P should be ashamed of himself <laughs> for revealing this information to me in a different game that he also made. <laughs> Consider this my formal complaint, Martha. I will <laughs> not play another Final Fantasy until Dawn Trail comes out in a couple months. Yours in this life and the next. <laughs> FF Fan Man 33. <laughs> All right. I have to admit, it was nice hearing the improv again. It was good. I liked it. I think you should do whatever you want, though, but I like these. Yeah. These are these are great. It's, well, yeah, some, hey, there's, there's a lot less prep. Yeah, there's yeah, been yeah. some good uh, gamer drama that has popped up since you stopped doing it, so we got a big well. Oh, that's, that's true. Yeah. And it seems like yeah. it's just more than ever, so uh, plenty for Martha to report home about. Well, that's fantastic. Nicely done. Time for some news we missed. Well, look at this. A new book about former Nintendo president Satoru Iwata, who passed away not too many years ago, is now available at Amazon. I thought it'd be just a thing to tell people about and go check it out. Um, he's a legend in a lot of people's eyes, mine included. I think I'm going to grab this book and give it a shot. I would um, like to read that. He seemed like a, an awesome, forward-thinking dude. Yeah, he's a very cool dude. Um I like him a lot. Uh, it says here, let's see, where is it? Uh, there's also a new book. Oh, I guess Reggie fils has been out for a while, but that Disrupting the Game book is supposed to be pretty good. Um, there's a Cliffy B book called uh, Control Freak that I think I kind of want to read because that guy was around for a lot of early weird shit. Yeah. Romero's got a new book. There's a bunch of like... Oh, man. A yeah, bunch of books. Yeah, all kinds of stuff. But the Iwata book, I don't know. It sounds like something special, probably worth grabbing. Uh, also, Among Us, the TV show, got casts, or got some casting. We're going to have some Star Wars, some Seinfeld, and some Ratatouille. Are you ready for who's in this thing? Yeah. Uh, let's see what we got here. Deborah Wilson is the yellow space person in Among Us. I don't know who that is. Pat Oswalt, we know him. I think, I think oh. that's all there is to know about the yellow person. You mean the actor or the yellow person? The uh, the actor. Oh, I know who she is. She's from uh, Redheaded Jedi game. Oh, all right. She's great then. We like her. She's awesome. Uh, White is played by Patton Oswalt. Uh, Brown will be played by Phil Lamar. It's a little on the nose, but okay. Fine. Whatever. Uh, I like Phil, Phil Lamar. And I, uh, uh, Wayne Knight. Uh, <laughs> Wayne from, Knight. <laughs> uh, TV's Newman will be lime colored uh, in this thing. 
And uh, I don't know. I kind of want to see this. I'm sure it's real stupid. But uh, oh, it's I animated. Have yet okay. to play Among Us. So. Oh yeah, definitely animated. These are just. I voices. didn't realize it was animated. I thought this was live action. <laughs> I was picturing something entirely different. They also the join uh, current cast members Dan Stevens, uh, we know from a million things, including Solar Opposites. Currently, uh, he'll be doing a voice. Liv Hewson, uh, Kamiko Glenn. Uh, don't not the Kamiko you're thinking of, Brian. Oh, did you guys hear that horrible news about the kid from uh, yeah. Devs or uh, not what? Devs Revs? What is it? Gen what? V, the kid from Gen V passed away. Got oh yeah, I did hear about motorcycle that. accident. Really it was sad. freaking yeah. awful. Another twenty seven year old, twenty seven club man. Oh no, really? Yeah, it's awful. Uh, anyway, he just seemed he was the most compelling actor of the group. I thought he was so good. He really, really, only really watched good. the first episode. Oh, that guy passed away. I yeah, I super. Who it is super. Bummer. I only watched the first episode. Yeah, he was really good. Oh, I'm really, be. really bummed about that. Um, Gen V got really good. It took me a while to get into it. Um, the ending kind of bugged but, me, but I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, the ending didn't make a lot of sense to me, but uh, I did Yvette, get into it. Yvette Nicole Brown from Community. Um, Elijah Woods in this. Ashley Johnson from The Last of Us oh, and uh, yeah. all that stuff. She's in there. So anyway, it's a t- TV show. Yep, TV t- show. animated TV thing coming to. When's this coming? I don't think we know when. Do we know? Uh, let's see. It's CBS, so I would assume that's uh, that's Paramount, Paramount Plus. Probably right? Paramount Plus. Yeah. yeah. When's the Diablo anime coming out? Never, if I had to guess. <laughs> Not gonna. I'm guessing it won't. I have bad. I've, I'm probably cr- too grumpy about that because I would really like that, but I don't feel like they're. I just yeah. I just wish they'd say like actually this is canceled. They just <laughs> they don't like the. It just occurred to me we were talking about. I'm like, there's gonna be an Among Us TV show and still no Diablo anime. Oh, no, that's that weird. Wasn't, it was announced, but anyways. This animation studio, Tip Mouse, uh, did Big Mouth, Star Trek, Lower Decks. They've got some some chutzpah. I think it could be interesting. So uh, my brother really likes Lower Decks a lot. Yeah, I, mean, I watched Lower a few Dex episodes and enjoyed good. it. Yeah. Oh, Lower Decks is great. Yeah, it's very good. Their crossover um, was really really good with, with uh, uh strange new worlds was that yeah. it yeah yeah here's uh some more news bafta poll awarded laura croft laura croft laura however you say it uh she got most iconic video game character so well done pointiest boobs as well was the subcategory that she won as well so that's good <laughs> those two oh, those were the two that, they gave i made that part an up. award for most iconic video game character yeah i don't know if i agree with it but that was the vote for the poll um i mean i I would have voted Mario, probably. I think Mario would have been the obvious choice. I think when I really, when you really <laughs> yeah. think about it, Lara Croft isn't an insane choice. Like, it, it's just one of those things where it's, it, it feels a little more obscure. Like, I don't think it makes sense to me as number one, but obviously it's what people picked. Yeah, this um, list is like, but again, what people uh, would be a good question. Like, I mean, she you know, is we, she is iconic. Is this a family feud? We pulled like Shadow Hearts people. on the list. Shadow Hearts on here? Yeah, Arthur <laughs> Morgan. No, Arthur Morgan's great. Don't give any shit to Arthur Morgan. Arthur We're saying Morgan's most iconic. Amazing. It's not about giving shit. It's just like who who are the most recognizable, you know, character like iconic, right? Like, yeah, I mean, come on. Asterion's on here. Cloud. Cloud could. Cloud belongs on there. Um. um who else? Uh, uh, see, I, Kratos is good. I think Master Chief is good. Link is good. Pac Man is probably Steve good from as any. Minecraft. Steve yeah. from Minecraft. Well, for a whole generation of people, that's a big one. Yeah. Uh, I, again, I think you ask a certain generation, and he he uh, would. We're talking about iconic. There. Like you put it up on a movie theater screen, and the majority of people will recognize who it is. Well, that's yeah. why we said generational. Like, yeah, I feel yeah, like no, us it, and younger. Everyone that's what I'm saying. I think it's got to be cross generational to even make the list. Like that's like Mario should be the saying. top, and then, and she he is second. Yeah. Agent Forty Seven <laughs> is third. That's yeah, amazing. Again, that <laughs> that is getting too specialty in in a different direction. Like yeah, yeah. yeah. Maybe like, that's him. Maybe that's him uh, wearing some other up. game character's clothes and pretending to be in fourth or third place. Yeah, <laughs> I think this is the. 
Yeah, Agent 47 as number three. Nah, yeah, that's pretty weird. No, like that's insanely no, high. But most iconic. above like There's... Sonic the Hedgehog, my son knows who Sonic the Hedgehog yeah. is. He doesn't know much about anything. Yeah. So yeah. like, it's just. <laughs> okay. I mean, and even if you're just like you know, like you think Pac-Man is just for old heads, but like everyone recognizes Pac-Man at some point, even as, as a young person, you are taught what Pac-Man is, even if you don't. Yeah. You weren't around for its glory day, you know. Like Pikachu yeah. is on their chat. It's number twelve. Yeah, yeah. It's too low. And like that, I don't disagree with. You know, Sonic again, very iconic. Like, Cloud. Yeah. If you like, said to me, characters on here I like. Kazuma Kiryu's on there. That's great, but like he doesn't necessarily but, belong on here. Yeah. Again, like you say, sort of generational. I'm like, yeah, that's it's a certain type of person is going to find him iconic, and maybe in Japanese, you know, like it's. Like, why is Asterion and Shadowheart on here? The game just came out. They're not. Yeah, they're iconic in that game. <laughs> but they're great, I, but yeah. The, and they may the, grow. They may grow to be more iconic over time. Maybe I don't know. Like this is just weird. If I was doing this, I'd say here are the twenty. Vote for the twenty most iconic characters, but don't rank them. Just this is just yeah. the list of twenty. Also that. Yeah. yeah. That would have been great. But this is and also weird. the okay, so here's the credentials, and I think this is where we see the problem. The poll was engaged with by over four thousand players from all over the world. That is a very small sample size, yeah. and it's also just general public picking a poll, like to me, uh, yeah, so they found a... they fa they accidentally or circumstantially found a lot of the Tomb Raider enjoyers, like. <laughs> In the group, like, you I know mean, I, like, again, don't like, get me wrong. I think Laura Croft probably actually does belong on this list. Has I would disagree with a, it, but not number a, one. Like, I feel like to me, iconic, you step outside of the gamer community and do they know the character? And to me, Laura Croft absolutely meets that credential, but like Agent 47, no, people will be like, it's a bald man. <laughs> you put a bald man. Yeah, but he's got a he's got a barcode. See, <laughs> yeah, but nobody's gonna know what that means. Nope. I nope. mean, yes, there were two movies, right? They did two movies on Hitman, but nobody saw them, and they were bad. And they were also bad. Very bad. Yeah. Well, whatever. I mean, it's fine. Laura Croft, you got your no, you got no, your it's BAFTA. Not fine. It's the end of the world as we know it. This is the worst thing. That's this ever was happened. almost <laughs> my gamer <laughs> drama, dear Martha. I was gonna ask, but yeah. it hadn't actually become drama. I hadn't seen anybody talking about it. Like it's just on all the news sites. Yeah. And I was like, well, everybody's gonna be upset about this. Yeah. But then I didn't see anyone talking about it, and I was like, eh, I guess we'll just mention it because it's it's silly. It's another one of those silly lists. Somebody's <laughs> like, oh, we asked fifteen people to rank their favorite Pokemon, and here, here's what we found. It's like, it doesn't mean anything in the grand scheme. Yeah, Geralt's not on the list. Yeah, yeah, I would, yeah, put, I would be consider there. him more iconic than a lot I of mean, people I mean, they made a whole list. TV show. Uh, yeah. What, yeah, Ryu from Street Fighter, is he on the list? Nope. No. Gordon Freeman? Nope. Well, Gordon Freeman, I don't think should be on the list, but... You know. I think he should. I'd put him no. there. Uh, Samus probably should be on the list. Samus should probably be there. I would agree with that. Like, there's also too many video games now. It's hard to yeah, make these. we're talking most iconic, so I'm, and I'm just looking through a list for some ideas, so, like, not all of them would be wild. Yeah, like Donkey wide, Kong. Uh, Donkey Kong belongs Dr. there. Dr. Tolbert in the chat <laughs> says Donkey Kong. Yeah, absolutely. Donkey <laughs> Kong is a great... Parappa yeah. the Rapper, I think probably still more people know who that is than maybe. Punch, like, kick, Sack it's Boy, probably. Yeah, yeah, put Sack Boy in there, sure. There, there's no, Sackboy Sack was on, the on there. Oh, I'm saying yeah. put Parappa over. Oh, Sack put him over Boy. that. Yeah, but I think Sackboy's all right. He's kind of earned it. Um, I think Nathan Drake, Doom guy, <laughs> right? Doom, yeah, Doom, Doom guy, exactly. Uh, what about B.J. Blazkowicz? Yeah, there's all kinds of PC How about stuff on there. I don't know. Hitler. Hitler's a character in Wolfenstein. Yeah, he's a oh, mecha we Hitler. Put him on a list. <laughs> And then it's not this list. Yeah, just a list. Uh, I after so playing funny. War and Death, I think all all three of the major horsemen should be on here. But that's my you know I'm currently enjoying those, so it's hard to yeah, say. But it's like who the most people would would know throughout culture. Is There's a guess. lot of weight mm -hmm. behind this the word iconic, and I think that choice of word immediately nullifies like half their list. Yeah, but yeah. now forever in the halls of BAFTA. <laughs> Laura Croft will be honored the most, and it's a travesty. BAFTA halls. It's a, it's a, what a shame. What a shame. Shame, shame, shame. Do you think the bathrooms there are called bathrooms instead of? 
Oh, BAFTA rooms. BAFTA rooms. Yeah. yeah. Can I use, can I, I need to borrow, can I, you guys have a good BAFTA room? <laughs> like, yeah. Did you take a BAFT before you got here and that kind of thing? I love they probably it. don't call it that. Don't, don't they call it something else in, in England, like the um, lavatory or something like oh, that? Oh, that's true. They uh, The loo and things like that. Or yeah. the WC. Don't they call it the WC over there? <laughs> I think in the 30s, maybe. I don't know if they do the, now. The washing closet. Water closet. Water closet. <laughs> washing closet. <laughs> Everybody wants a washing closet. Uh, <laughs> where you go to like, wash? That's where you Actually, go to wash. a good premise where, like, you know, because people want a walk in closet, but you don't know, you think it's washing closet. So you're like, where's the washing closet? Yeah, that's how things get said wrong. That's how ch- phrases change all the time. I'm with you. This, this is how comedy shows are written. This, this is, is exactly wrong. right. Well, let's move on to this bit of comedy. S- uh, System Shock remake, which I was praising last week, I still praise it. I think it's very good, uh, is getting a massive patch. They're revising the ending. They're changing it so you can choose male or female protagonists. And uh, they've been working on it for eight years. Significant quality of life improvements, all this other stuff. Uh, I'm being warned that I should not play it maybe yet till the patch. But my answer to that is, well, what if I'm playing it? I got to start over? Is it going to screw my save? Well, yeah, I, like, I finished the first floor. I don't know how far into the game that is. Like, feels like chapter one. Well, and like, I, I have to haven't restart. played it yet. And don't I feel like the winner for waiting? I, I think you are, actually. <laughs> but uh, it sounds like they're going to do a lot to uh, update it. So, you know, yeah. like, you can play a female or a male. They're adjusting balance and all kinds of shit. And I'm like, I'm not that far. So I'm like, I definitely could start over, you know. Let's see. It says. When are we getting the remake of System Shock Two, though? Uh, that not is to, still happening. To, I think. You know, be grumpy about the thing we have for the thing we don't, but also, when are we getting System Shock Two? I think we are getting that. I thought I read that they were working on that same dev Night, too. Night Dive Studios. Yeah, I think so. I, I, the yeah. website. If it's, I mean, this remake is so good, at least so far, anyway. And now it sounds like it's going to even be better. I'm all ready for two. I'd yeah. like a three if they could ever get around to that shit. Like, let's go. System shock, man. It's good stuff. Uh, all right. There's all that. Let's get to today's emails and calls. That's a good question. Actually, today it's all about texts and voicemails. And in fact, given the late hour here, I think I'm going to skip ahead a little. Uh, well, I'm going to read this one. This is an anonymous person. I'm listening to you and Bo, uh, meaning I guess me and John uh, uh, listening to Bo, talk about social media views, and I think you'll recognize that it is simply our most juvenile behavior being given credit. I really like this take. Imagine any child two to ten years old. How often do they want to see want you to see what they can do? Watch me spin. Watch me run real fast. Watch me splash this guy uh, or squish this guy in Mario. Maybe if somebody isn't watching, then their fun isn't valid. Social media views chasing in the same uh, is chasing the same thing. If ten thousand people, I love this part. If ten thousand people didn't see me eat a fart, then it wasn't worth it. They weren't validated enough. Just like a child who needs to be seen, social media is feeding all of our worst, most childish, and vain tendencies. In my opinion, of course, said this anonymous. But his line that says, "If ten thousand people didn't see me eat a fart, then it wasn't worth it." I love that line. That's amazing. And it's true. If they don't see you eat a fart, what's what's the point of eating farts? Then why eat farts? Yeah, I mean, don't. I thought like, oh, that's the watch me. Yeah, <laughs> I thought that was the whole premise of TikTok was to get your your. I think it is. Same that's his point. Stuff. That's his point. But He's like, it sucks. I'd add that there's money potential for for this stuff too. So. Well, yeah, there's it's money, a, money and not attention. for everyone, but there are people who do this stuff for financial incentive. Too. Yeah, and you'll eat a fart for a dollar. At least that's what Robocop well, told me. Well, yeah, I mean. I'd eat that I'd fart for a, dollar. for a dollar. Yeah, exactly. Here's another one from Chan who wrote in says, Core, lightning round hypothetical when consuming media, game shows, movies, whatever, would you rather have an amazing audio setup but mediocre TV or a gorgeous 4K OLED but you're stuck listening to crappy TV speakers? Uh, the 4K OLED with crappy TV speakers, not because I think it's more important, but I used to have amazing an amazing sound system that could literally shake the walls if something real bassy happened. Yeah. And then I moved into an apartment and uh, had to give that up because it would uh, get me immediately on 
the most wanted list of all my neighbors. Yeah. And since then, uh, I, I moved to like a sound bar, which, you know, didn't feel great, but at least it was okay for the apartment. And then I had a baby. And let me tell you what doesn't fly in a household with a baby is satellite speakers of any kind. Mm. That sound bar kept getting moved around and tossed. One day we took apart the subwoofer and I actually tweeted this. I, I wish I had thought about it. I would have pulled up the tweet of what I pulled out of our subwoofer because it was like two slices of bread, four <laughs> uh, Hot Wheel cars, a sock. Like I just pulled so much stuff that he had just jammed in the subwoofer that we've been living on like TV speaker sound for years now. Yeah. And so I'm used to it. So I get a 4K OLED out of this deal without any change to my speakers uh, set up. So I would take that, not necessarily as a decision, but it just feels like the biggest upgrade for what I have. I would agree. I would rather have the, the visuals and I can headphone into a controller or something. Because that's I know that's not implied here that I can't do that, so I'm going to assume that I can. So I'll, I'll Bluetooth or cable in a, a headset and get all the sound I need. And I'll have the better TV. Bo, what would you do? I'm the audio guy. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I'd rather have uh, headphones, no TV speakers, and um, I'd rather hear everything crystal clear and nice, and I can deal with a CRT or whatever. Nice. Look at us, all three different answers, kind of. Ish. Yeah. yeah. That was amazing. Uh, thanks, Chan. We appreciate it. I also got a couple of voicemails. These are both pretty quick. One of them is a reminder about a game coming out that I have my eyes on. He's, he doesn't sound sure of it, but here we go. Hey, Scott. This is Scott Waldeck. I don't know if you recently noticed on YouTube, but there is a trailer for Division of Mana by Square Enix. Thought I'd bring it to your attention. Okay. Bye. So they showed this at the Sony event, I think. Wouldn't want anything <laughs> bad to happen. To yeah. You. <laughs> It does have a real Watch vibe. Can we talk about the weird stuff. vibe about this uh, about this voicemail? Yeah, oh it was a little. Um, he's called before other shows or something, but he sounds like he. Yeah, like John. It's like he's gonna. Sure would be a shame if you yeah. didn't watch the Visions of Mana trailer and accidentally broke both of your legs. Put the money in the garbage can underneath the. <laughs> you know, yeah, it's that sort of thing, but. Uh, yeah, I knew about this game. I'm very excited about it. One thing I didn't talk about today on the show, or maybe I mentioned it, but I played more Trials of Mana this week because uh, I re-upped my PSN subscription because I'm testing things out on the uh, on the portal. And I'd, I was like, oh, I can go finish that now because that's where I was playing it. And that game is awesome. I think Visions of Mana, which is, he got a little cut off there, glitched, but that's the name of it, uh, looks great. And it's the first original Mana, not a remake of a previous Japanese and or US release of one of the old Mana games. And if it's anything like the Trials one, I'm stoked because that game plays amazing. It's got terrible localization, um, but that's fine. Whatever. Those are the things I've come to enjoy. You know, I can deal with the bad voices. But uh, yeah, it looks great. Looks like an amazing uh, game. That'll probably be the the one Square game I'm most excited about this year, uh, unless I get really hooked into. 14 again, which I don't think that'll happen, but we'll see. And you can join me on the summer vacation that will be Don Trail. Yeah. I'd probably do a boost. I don't know. I don't know if I can... Uh, I don't know. I have to think about it. All right. Here's one more. John, this is mostly for you, this call. Yeah. It's not really for you, but you'll appreciate it. Here you go. Lo, lo, lo. Lo, lo, lo. Lo, lo, lo. John Scott and Bo. Lo, lo, lo. <laughs> Love the show. Love the show. Never know. Never know where it'll go. <laughs> Lo, lo, lo. <laughs> Love the show, guys. Keep up the tangents. Love it. All right. Nice reminder. See? ASMR right there. Yep. That's a that's a million view YouTube clip right there. Pretty good. Lo, lo, lo. So he's I I'd showed John this earlier. It is in my to-do list to make that video. I was gonna do it before tonight's show. I just didn't get around to it. Oh, you are making an ASMR video? Oh yeah. I'm gonna make about a minute of me doing it and then loop that shit till it's do like you, a do twenty you have minute video. The microphone for it? I don't probably not. I'm just gonna go. <laughs> okay. Well, let me discourage you. Sorry. I'm just gonna get up on close and go wololo, wololo, and then do the thing. <laughs> I'm gonna do it. it. It's and I'm wearing a hood and all like all the stuff John talked about last week. I'm gonna do it. I just got to do it. Okay. I'm looking forward to it. And I'm putting it on my channel and just saying here, this is it. 
And yeah. if it blows up, I'll give John. Let's say this thing gets like six million views. <laughs> I will give John. 10% of whatever YouTube gives me for 10%? <laughs> He's not giving me anything. Don't complain. Yeah. <laughs> That's fine. That's That's fair. If it turns out to be an amazing idea, let's see how it all goes. It just was shockingly low compared to what I thought I was, the number was coming out. All right. I'll, I'll, fair. <laughs> I'll give you 10%. All right. I'll give you I'll give you 20, but I can't go any higher. I don't know. I don't know what I'll do. But something cool will happen. Anyway, thank you for your calls, your thoughts, your feelings. If you'd like to send us voicemails, 801-471-0462 is the number. You can also text us that same number. And if you'd rather email us, talk to the core at gmail.com is the place to do it. Please join our Discord as well. It's a great place to chat with the hosts and others in the community. That's at frogpants.com slash Discord. You don't have to do anything fancy. Just get in and be a part of that community. Uh, that is going to do it for us, but it is now time to give away here, I'm going to play some of Bo's cool background stuff. Hold on. Where is this? Mm -hmm. um, hold on. Here it is. I'm going to play. Okay, so we got a little under music here to play. For the giveaway of the Doghouse Systems uh, notebook, oh. gaming notebook, the Mobius notebook from last week, we started the contest. Uh, we referred to a bunch of those people today and how awesome all of your uh, stuff was. It was a random pick. It wasn't dependent on how nice of the thing you said was we're doing this very mathematically <laughs> which is which is why the winner who wrote eat farts a holes <laughs> is uh, an unfortunate poll but yeah but we learned earlier that eating farts and nobody seeing it wasn't worth not it or worth something it. not worth it anyway uh we have a winner and we're going to announce his name here he doesn't know this yet so if he's listening right now that'd be awesome i don't know if he's in the live chat if he's not he'll hear it soon enough uh, he'll also get reached out and talked to by the folks over at Doghouse Systems. But big <laughs> thanks to them once again. To. The Andrew, or the Andrew, the name is Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Oh, man. You haven't said the last name yet, and so many people named Andrew right now are like, I know. Is it, is oh, it me? Your, is it me? There's so <laughs> many, many Andrews. See, it's name. an Andrew? It's so many Andrews right now. I didn't even think of that. This is bad. I should hurry up yeah. and say the last name. The last name is Andrew Twyman. Andrew oh, Twyman. All the, other, all the other Andrews in shambles right now. <laughs> it's awesome, though, man. I'm so excited. You know what? We'll play a Fletcher thing. Congratulations. Congratulations. You're a winner. You've won Andrew Twyman. Sorry, all the other Andrews. I wish there's something I could do for you. <laughs> the best part was the way you, you said it. And the Andrew is. <laughs> the Andrew is. I mean, it's kind of true, right? It was. Yeah, still kind of true. But anyway, Every Andrew Twyman gives up more. It's a car accident. <laughs> just I don't know why this happens on here. I do this all the time on shows. I don't you know, know why you they do don't. find in the wow Q and A's. I don't know why. what is this, what is going on with this. I think it's because I think I'm going to screw up, or I th I'm afraid I'm going to, and then I do. It's like self fulfilling prophecy. But anyway, Andrew Twyman, you're the winner, and big, do we, big, do we big know thanks. what Andrew Twyman's favorite core memory was? No, I don't. They didn't send me that. They just sent me his name. Um, oh come on! I know. I, I wish I had more. Let's see. Can I? Let me see if they sent anything since. Uh, where is their name? There we go. I tried to find it on Twitter when I realized that I could see who the winner was early. I and I didn't see it. Maybe it was from Facebook. It might be the Facebook one. They used both, uh, and they put both together in the same uh, pool. So I know it, was, it probably was. Oh, you know what it says right here? This one came from Facebook, they said. So it is a Facebook one. Anyway, if Andrew used his real name on there, we could probably find it. Uh, well, but Andrew, look, Yeah, let's, let's find it. Do you have access to the Facebook post? No. I mean, not oh. quickly. Hold on. Okay. This is Everybody. getting better and better. Hold on a second. No, I just people want to know what the comment is. No, I get it's it. being asked in chat. I want to know. I want to know, too. Okay, here we go. Like, what What's the winning opinion? Because to me, that is more value in a person's winning opinion is, if wait, they're a winner. You want to, you want to draw. <laughs> oh, crap. I have to go through hundreds and hundreds of these. Hold on. Yeah. Maybe it's a quick fun. Maybe it's a quick glance here. Look, um, Dr. Tolbert's posting it in the chat. How did he Dr. find Tolbert it? Dr. Tolbert is a hero. Well, he, although he did go to medical school, so... It's just better at things. He's though. a smart That's guy. The, right. extra oh, time. he says... All right, here it is. He says... I love the core crew since they were a hots podcast. So glad they survived the topic switch. My favorite mem memory is, uh, sorry, it scrolled, uh, is the fact that there are three hosts on the show. I gather it's key <laughs> to remember when things are being given away. I also remember, <laughs> yes. I also remember hearing about Doghouse Systems since they were sponsoring Garrett and Kyle on Starcast. Glad to support the whole team. 
Well, there you go, man. Congratulations oh. and uh, well done, well played, Andrew Twyman. Uh, I also like when people know that there are three hosts on the show. I know. I, I think you on, especially. I want to say, uh, Scott, there's been a market uptick in Scott remembering there are three hosts on the show. <laughs> yeah. I just want to take this time to appreciate you. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. I sent a couple yeah, of Scott, codes you guys' you. way. And, and, and thank you, uh, people who give Scott codes. <laughs> like, it's not just Scott. Share, Scott just doesn't withhold the codes. Uh -oh. <laughs> he doesn't have three, and he's like... I'm not going to give it to them. No, people. I have nothing to do with those. Yeah. And I'm not going to sell them the, to some the, shady thing on the internet. I'm going to give them to my friends. Again, so. I am constantly shocked at who listens to this show. Like, you you know, and so they're out there. They're hearing you, John. They do. They hear you. They, we they hear do. you. Yeah, it's upsetting. That oh, every funny, week. But speaking of our friend, uh, so uh, speaking of which, our friends at Dark Tide or the folks that make Dark Tide, they listen, or at least one of them does. Can you please make your game work on my Steam Deck? That's all I'm. Steam Deck. <laughs> deck. We're calling in personal favors now. <laughs> I don't know why it doesn't. It should. It just should work. So I want it to work because I love your game and I want to play in bed. I think it's a fair request to say I'd like to play on the Steam Deck. Yeah, and they may be working on that. I know they probably have priorities that aren't that. <laughs> yeah, they had other things they had to work on. Yeah, first. they got to work on other stuff. And I really like that game and I want to play it in the wee hours. All right, so get that happening. Anyway, that is going to do it for today. But a, a quick Dog mention House, of our uh, – oh, yeah, huge thanks to them. Couldn't do it without them. And uh, more stuff in the future. So watch for more. Patreon.com slash core show is how you can support us directly and keep this show on the air. You like these contests? You like the fun stuff we do? You like the content? Well, then show it by signing up like Emmer Doku, Doker, Henry Sweeting, and Joe McNally. All three. That reminds me, the Henry Sweeting is, you want a sweetie? You want a sweetie? Remember that in District 9? Anyway. Yeah. I never. I, that's all. Works. Scott is so. That, is, that, is that Charlto Charpley? Or yes, it is Charlto Charpley. That's the guy. <laughs> oh, and no. he says to the little baby alien, he, go, he tries to give him candy. He goes, Sweetie, you want a sweetie? And I never forget oh, it. That guy's so weird, man. I like that guy. I know. He's, got, he's in the new movie I want to see. Uh, oh, shit. What was it? it? Oh, it looks crazy. The super violent thing. Uh, uh, de, um, something boy. K killed by something boy <laughs> killed <laughs> killed by boy hold on killed Charlto, by something boy what is charlto copley's real name let's look this up oh there he is all right no it's charlto copley charlto copley or have you say it <laughs> <Charlto>. <laughs> monkey oh, i'm Charlto. sorry i was totally wrong about the name it's monkey man <laughs> oh my god <laughs> you all need to see the the red From band trailer killed by something boy to <laughs> monkey man <laughs> This looks so good, though. So, wait. I'll put this in here so you can see it later. Uh, where's our damn group? Everything's off tonight. Okay, there we go. It's right underneath that awesome art. Um, it looks it looks awesome. It's directed by Dev Patel. Oh, no, it's not Monkey Man. Shit. <laughs> yeah, I'm seeing... Uh, no, no, Charlotte Co Copley's in Monkey No, Man. I know he is, but I think I picked the wrong movie. Hold on. Boy Kills World. I was close. Boy Kills World. Wrong one. This is ridiculous. Hold on a second. Okay, oh, that's the movie you need to see the trailer for. Movie. This looks insane. Good lord. Yeah, you got to see this. I'm sure the other one's good too, but uh, that cast is crazy. Charlotte Copley is in it and a bunch of other people. <laughs> oh, damn. You know who else is in it? Freaking um, H. John Benjamin. Mary. Uh, Mary. Um, oh, Mary Michelle Dockery. Yep. From uh, Mary from Downton Abbey. Downton Abbey, yep. Fam Fam Grantham, Jansen, right? Yep. Bill Skarsgård, your main. Uh, bunch I of like Bill Skarsgård. I do too. Like, he's great. That that dude. I feel like almost everything he's in, I I dig. Yeah, and this is somehow related to the dude who produced that uh, movie I loved that he did last year, <laughs> Barbarian. Uh, he so apparently drug him with him for so, whatever this is. This looks awesome. It looks over the top, Barbarian ridiculous. Was really good. I like. This looks bloody as shit. Go watch the trailer. It looks ins insane. Anyway, uh, that was all dumb. Uh, no commercials ever. Pre-show content every week. You get monthly uh, benefits. I sent some art out this month that I'm very proud of. Y'all want this? You gotta get it. You go over to Patreon.com/slash/CoreShow today, and you'd be all set. That is gonna do it for us. Time to pass the mic to Grandma, who will sum up what we played this week while you weren't paying attention. Grandma, take it away. Well, the boys actually played a good selection of video games, so I wouldn't fault you for not remembering what it was they played. 
Scott played Darksiders and Darksiders 2. That's the old Zelda game that with death and war <laughs> and the other two horsemen that didn't they didn't show up for it. Yeah. He also played Songs of Conquest, which was the game that was like Heroes of Might and Magic. He also played AFK Journey. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about AFK Journey, Grandma? Uh... If you like bullshit, you're probably looking for that one. Yep. Uh, John tried to play No Man's Sky, Baldur's Gate 3, WWE 2K24, and Helldivers 2, and failed miserably at all four of them. Yep. He also played Final Fantasy 16's event in Final Fantasy 14. He played Fortnite and kind of tried to play Dragon's Dogma 2, so get in those comments. <laughs> Bo, on the other hand, he played Bo. card card games. Yeah, I don't know what happened. <laughs> don't he realize pl- Melody he, on my name. Yeah. He played. Did you play Hearthstone? Hold on, let me. Yes. I wasn't clear. Yes, you did, Graham, I played Hearthstone. You God did, damn it! You did play it. Okay, he did play Hearthstone. Then he moved on, yeah. uh, which you should too, and try Shogun Showdown, Spell Rogue, Fights in Tight Spaces, and Griftlands. Yeah. That's all of them. That's everything, which is a lot. All right. And I got more. I bought so much more. <laughs> I, I can't wait to hear <laughs> about more. More to come. I'm sure next week we'll we'll hear more of what Bo bought in a rage of money spending. Uh, all right, everybody. That's it. That's the show. Come back next week for more, won't you? In the meantime, go play some games or do something fun. I don't know. Whatever you do with your life, that'll be it for us. And we'll see you then. Get more at frogpants.com. Many know the Reaper, old one, but I don't know you. Oh my gosh, dude.